Luca here from MiniWarGaming.com and welcome to another episode of The Lost City, our open sandbox Age of Sigmar narrative campaign designed specifically for you, our guests. We play and call it work. Mini War Gaming's Age of Sigmar Battle Report. Scott has traveled all the way from Rochester, New York State, uh, bringing his Eidneth Deep Gits today, which is a heavily converted army, which you'll see in but a second, and very fitting for today's match, who will be representing the Order Alliance to fight over the territory of the Iron Horn Mountains in the Realm of Beasts, very close to the capital city here. I'll be taking the role of the Defender with the Gloom Spike Gits, representing destruction in today's game. Let's take a look at the forces I'll be playing first from the Gloom Spike Gix. I, uh, I put together a list to represent a squig herd farm in force, so hopefully that works out here. I randomized all my enhancements uh, to give it some flavor and uh, take it out of my control a little bit too. Now my general is gonna be this loon boss on giant cave squig, the self-proclaimed squig king. He is gonna be a squig whisperer as his command trait, as well as uh, <laughs> equipping his giant cave squig with loon stone teeth caps right here from this loon shrine that you guys are gonna see on the table. That ain't, that ain't the way to do things, but you know, he's a self-proclaimed squig king, so he does what he wants. Uh, alongside him, we are gonna have a fungoid cave shaman with squig lure as a spell. Uh, the rest of my forces will be three units of reinforced squig herd, as well as a unit of 10 squig hoppers that you don't actually see here because I forgot to give them to our editor, Michael, who uh, loves me very much. And then we are gonna have a mangler squig. And of course you can't have a list in some mountains without some trolls, uh, rock gut trogoths to be specific. So I have a reinforced unit of them and one dank hold trogoth to go along with them. I had a few points left over, so I went with the Scrap Scuttles Arachna Cauldron because it just looked cool and it uh, it was 50 points, so it made the cut. That is our Squig Herd Squig Farming list today. Let's go see what Scott's bringing to bear. Hi, I'm Scott from Rochester and I brought today my Eidneth Deep Gits. Uh, this is an army of Eidneth that has just while stealing souls from Gits have found that they're started to mutate and become closer to them. And while doing so, they realize that the bad moon actually impacts the ether sea and helps them continue to search for more souls. And they are in the Morphan Enclave. And our grand strategy is Creeping Gloomtide. Our army is led by an Achillean King on Squigmare. He has the bladed polearm, his command trait is Unstoppable Fury, and his Squigmare has the mount trait of Void Chill Darkness. Next we have a Eidolon, who has the Steed of Tide spell. Next I have an Ishrin Squig Render. He has the Arcane Tome, and the aspect of the champion is Fueled by Gyrus Rage. Next I have a reinforced unit of Gitmarty Reavers, and another reinforced unit of Gitmarty Thralls a reinforced unit of squeals with the lances, and two units of alapaxes, which I call the squignado, and they have the razor shell harpoons, and that all fits into a battle regiment. Today's game, we have Scott's forces infiltrating the Ironhorn Mountains to establish a location for the forces of order to easily attack the nearby Fortress of Savage Reach. If Scott's able to do so, Order will have a very easy way in. So this game is quite important for destruction to hold, but it is just a squig farm after all in the mountains. So it is not the most professional force defending it. And what better battle plan than the Nidus paths to represent what we're trying to accomplish today. So the area is riddled with tunnels and holes as though it were the hive of some colony of monstrous insects. So this will give us the ability to pop around quickly in today's game. As you can see, there are four main objectives for control over this particular path in the mountains. There is one in each player's territory, and then there are two more in no man's land, but also bordering those territories. Not wholly within them, but they're touching them. We will be using the current season of war 
uh, to play this game. Because we're playing in the realm of beasts, it just makes sense. So victory points are going to work as follows. You're going to score one victory point if you control at least one of the objectives, one if you have two or more, one if you have more than your opponent, and two if you do your battle tactic. And then, of course, the grand strategy at the end of the game will award three additional victory points uh, to the side that completes it. Whoever has the most amount of victory points after five battle rounds will be the winner. Now, there is a twist to the Nidus Path, obviously. <laughs> and that rule is called the Nidus Path. It is the namesake of the mission. There are four paths. As you can see here, we have Nidus Path A and the opposite side, Nidus Path A. And then there is a Nidus Path B opposite that or adjacent to that, I should say. And then opposite that, you have the continuation of beasts. So the way this works is at the end of the movement phase, you can pick one of your units wholly within six of that path, and then you place it on the opposite connecting path, wholly within six and more than nine away from enemy units. You can still charge if you do so, but if, if you ran to get to that position to teleport, you then cannot obviously um, charge because you teleport or you ran that turn. Otherwise, uh, it's a straightforward battle, but with the additional maneuverability throughout the tunnels. Here we are set up for our battle here in the Ironhorn Mountains. Everyone, we rolled off. Uh, I think I, I did win the roll off. I'm the defender narratively and Scott's the attacking forces. I let him pick a territory and deploy his forces first because he had his one battle regiment. I, on the flip side, also ro uh, rolled out a battle regiment. I'm going to probably run battle regiments for the most part for like the unorganized forces I'm trying to roll, uh, roll with. And uh, it, uh, it'll make more sense later. When I'm, when I'm playing like a faction that's already established in an area with a token, that'll be a more proper military force. These are obviously like lists that can play the game, but they're not like proper, like a lot of synergies put in them. There's a lot of things that are good, but with a focus on like kind of random happenstance. I, funny enough, worked out quite well this time. And uh, I forgot to cover a couple things. So I got a battle regiment. Uh, the only thing that didn't fit fully in was the Dankhold Trogoth, I guess. But he's the, the second drop to the list. And I forgot to mention my grand strategy was to protect the Loon Shrine. It's like, everything's happy, good, just eating mushrooms, keeping it real here in the dark caves. And, um, you know, we love our Loon Shrine. And we love the Bad Moon, simple as. The problem is, they're here now. And they're kind of weird and creepy looking. Um, they, they're very tall gits. We don't like that. In fact, there's like some sort of like internal, uh, it's almost like instinctual fear of them, what they are and what they represent. So <laughs> we're not too sure. So we're gonna desperately try and protect the Loon Shrine. So the goal is to keep the enemies away from it by the end of the game. And I believe Scott mentioned his, which is like nearly identical in the form of the ship. Yep, creeping gloom tide. Gonna Creep. protect the boat so they can leave with their souls at the end. Exactly that. Nick actually rolled in on the uh, Tar Pit River there. Uh, otherwise, I think I forgot. These are the squig hoppers I forgot to show off. And because we're playing in the Iron Horn, Iron Horn Mountains, uh, the effect would be cramped corridors as we're fighting inside of a cave. Units with the fly rule cannot pass over terrain or models. They are kind of, they can't take too high to the sky and uh, they're kind of forced to fight head on. Unstable terrain as well. At the beginning of every player turn, uh, each player is going to roll a d6. Uh, and then if they roll a six, they randomly choose an enemy unit and it'll suffer d3 mortal wounds to represent uh, the cave kind of falling on itself. Obviously the gits kind of are rough and uh, they don't care too much about uh, the lives of the squigs. And uh, they have not kept this mountain, or at least they haven't reinforced this mountain in any way, shape, or form. They just exist here. And a surprise assault. Whoever controls this territory will treat Savage Reach's requirement to attack as five. That is why this is so important to control for destruction, because it allows easy access to order. Order, yes. It allows easy access to Savage Reach, the Fortress of Destruction, and we cannot lose it. Well, we, I don't want Destruction to lose it right away. It makes it so you need five to attack it instead of 15, which means Order, if they control this mountain, will easily be able to harass Savage Reach as much as they kind of want to. And on top of all that, mentioning Savage Reach, because we're fighting in the realm of beasts, I do have Savage Reach under control of destruction, which means I'll have the command support from it, giving me one additional command point every one of my hero phases. On top of that, uh, we as Destruction have the lowest control of power realm points. 
or at least fewer than the attacking force, which is Order, who has the most right now, we are going to get a free triumph no matter what the points difference is. And I'm taking Indomitable, I believe it is, where I just automatically pass a morale check. Now, that's good for a squig list because they can't actually take orders. And you typically want them to run away anyways. However... Uh, sometimes you don't want them to run away, so this is good to have in your back pocket just in case. And that's uh, that's generally it. We've deployed in a Vanguard style deployment, more than nine away from the middle, and the two objectives on the sides. And we're we'll playing a straight up, uh, like just match play game using the new Season of War rules, uh, fueled by Gersh Rage on my guy. And yours, we mentioned earlier, was um, same fueled by Gersh Rage. Fu as fueled well. by Gersh Rage as well. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and play this game. Do you know who you want to go first here, Scott? You got priority. Oh, but the bad moon is going over there. For anyone who's curious, yeah, it'll start in that table quarter. Uh, I think I'm gonna need a minute. Not fair. So we've had some time to think about it. What's the plan? I'm gonna let the gets go first. The gets go first. It's a little risky because of the bad moon over here, the advancing charge. We also have squig lure, but I mean, it's very dicey. That's the thing. And like the other side is you, me going second, uh, like a squig, a destruction double turn can be pretty devastating. So. Uh, we're going to see what the squigs can accomplish in turn one as they quickly amass their forces and assuredly charge right at the enemy in true squig fashion. As we go on to my turn, I just wanted to show off the score sheet we'll be using here. It's going to be, I'll be on the right, I'll be the enemy as I usually am. And then we're going to have Scott as the, the left side. Command points. So going to three, first general being alive. I'll be at three because I'm going first, but I also have Savage Reach in this realm, giving me that extra command point on my turn. And this is where we'll be showing our scores as well. I know it's sometimes self-explanatory, but I like to point it out uh, just in case people are unfamiliar with scoring sheets and all that stuff. Anyways, I am gonna roll a d6 here for my mouthpiece of Mork, which is my little fungoid cave shaman here near the, uh, I think he was right there, he got moved a little bit. Uh, on a four up, he uh, hears the words of Mork, or at least what he thinks is the words of Mork, and I get an extra uh, command point. I don't. That's easy enough. I already got more than enough. And again, the bad moon's gonna be in this table quarter, so pretty much uh, we're gonna have plus one save for our trolls. And then all the squigs, if they're in the light of the bad moon, they can charge even if they ran that turn. This thing provides the light of the bad moon. I'm kind of saying it out loud because I. The challenge of the campaign is playing all the armies in Age of Sigmar. <laughs> so it's a little difficult to remember what everything does. It is a complex game. Before I go into battle tactics and heroic actions, I think it'd be fun to see if we have a cave-in. So we're both gonna roll a d6. I do not roll a d6. However, if Scott rolls a d6, he picks one of my random units to get booped. Nope. nope. No cave-in yet. Not too confident in a stab him in the dark for battle tactics. We're gonna go for something pretty predictable. Uh, we're gonna go for a desecrate. That rock with the mushroom, just the rock itself though, is gonna be the land I'm trying to desecrate. In this case, trying to re-establish control over the, uh, the, the caves here. So that is our battle tactic. Our action is gonna be leadership on our the Squig King over here. Uh, he does not get that, that's okay. What would you like to do for an action? I'm gonna go leadership with the squig render. The squig render, nice. No! no. All right, no leadership today, only madness. <laughs> I am gonna go right to spell casting because I believe that's where we're at right now. And I'm gonna try and summon the little cauldron, which is hilarious. I just read his rules and I only added it because there's 50 points, didn't look at his rules at all. I love it. Now, there is one more thing we have to do for the Ideneth uh, Deepkin or the Gitkin here. Uh, what is the, the art ritual you're talking about? So it's a ritual um, from the Ishran Squig Render. He gets to pick one and he's doing the ritual of surging stream. So it adds plus one to run and charge rolls in turn two. Okay. Oh, because it's like based on the tide thing. Gotcha. Understood. Right. So let's summon the cauldron. It's cast on at five. The cauldron answers my heeds and uh, I sit up within one inch. The way the cauldron works is it's a part of his unit now. They're essentially one unit. They always have to stay coherent. And it allows me to cast an additional spell every hero phase. However, it is a little picky because it requires a sacrifice to do so. So when it's set up, and at the beginning of every one of my hero phases, I have to feed the pot. It can either be a, any unit within three will take a mortal wound that cannot be negated. It can be an enemy unit, but if, if there's no enemies within three, it must be one of mine. So as is tradition, we're gonna put a squig into the pot. However, I'm going to remember that squigs actually have two wounds each. So we only cut a flank with the sickle off one of the squigs. It's okay, they will grow it back. This is what squigs go through all the time and it's not cruelty. Uh, we're gonna put it right in the pot there. It's gonna turn it up and it's gonna allow us to cast an additional spell. And it makes us a lore master of the, the bad moon lore or the, the well, whatever our lore is called. With that in mind, we might as well cast a spell though. 
as much as I really want to do Squiggler and just freaking send her, I think it's a pretty bad idea. So for our spell today, we are going to cast Wild Form just to tempt myself even further. So this is the Realm of Beast spell that we have in the narrative campaign in addition to the Jaws of Galet, which is the other Realm of Beast spell. Uh, this is going to be a unit gets to run and charge and, and the wizards can always cast this spell in addition to their other spells. Just to risk the miscast and drop it down on the ground. It's going to be a 6 plus a 5 to cast. So that'll give a unit plus 2 to run and charge unless you'd like to dis uh, unbind I'm too that. far away. I would love to, but I'm oh, too far away. You're too far, eh? Interesting. Far. It's 18 inch range for that. Interesting. Interesting. I probably could have lined that up a little bit better for those guys. Ah, uh, plus two to run and charge rolls. Plus two to run and charge rolls. Man, I don't want to. You know what? I have a plan. It's going to be a little bit of a wild plan. But it's going to be a plan. We're going to target. Oh, man. Why is it? Why are squigs so hard to make decisions? They're so cool in what they could do. Ah. Okay. I am going to have to target this mangler squig with that one. Yes. Uh, we are going to attempt a Mystic Shield on top of that. We get it with a six. That's also going to go in the Mangler's Wig. We got big plans here. That should be the end of my turn. So he's got Mystic Shield and the Realm of Beast spell, Wild Form, plus two to run and charge rolls. And we're going to go right to movement. I, if I can get him to run into this table quarter, he could declare a charge still because he's a squig. Now these squigs are going to do the same thing. Problem is, I don't know who to do at the double two. <laughs> I don't really know who to do at the double two at all. I think I do him. Let me see where he ends up if I at the double M. I actually just figured out super easy math without having to worry about it. If I at the double this guy, he moves 22 inches. And we know, you know, half the board is 22 inches and he's not, he's uh, about three quarters of an inch away from the edge. So he'll be three quarters of an inch in that table quarter. So that means he'll be in that table quarter and thus he'll be eligible to charge because he'll be in the light of the bad moon. So we're gonna at the double him. And we're gonna see what that can actually accomplish for me. Because he might just be caught out of position and fail to charge still. That's where he's gonna bounce to after his move, and that's the charge distance he needs to clear to make a charge. I don't know if you'll be able to. What is he? He's over. He's at over. nine. He's at nine. Nine is charge, that's not so bad. So with the plus two, you don't need a seven. That's right, because I put that spell on him, which I totally remembered. Scott has handy dandy little markers there to help me remember my spells. Thank you very much, because I am infamously bad at doing that. I always say I'm going to get markers, and I never do, because I get distracted by other games. And uh, as some of you might uh, <laughs> be able to... Anyways, one track mine sometimes, I get distracted easily. A lot of you can uh, <laughs> kind of share those feelings, I'm, I'm sure. So we are going to go ahead and then run these squigs. Now, if they run really well, I do have to try and stay nine away from the, the Namardi over there, the Thralls just because I don't want them to redeploy. So we're gonna see what they end up getting. We're gonna run an additional four, that ain't bad. That's their move, actually, they move nine. I forgot their D6 plus five, so this is their run on top of it. Okay, another eight. Just staying outside of nine, because I can't risk triggering the redeploy. And then we're gonna run our uh, Squid King here. Uh, okay, and only an extra three on top of his move. Just enough to give him an order where that pops up. The rest, I'm just gonna move off camera because it's inconsequential to my plan here. I'm just gonna consolidate on the objectives, try and remain in control of them. These guys can stay back here. The squig hoppers are gonna be my nidus path to threaten your backfield, as, as well as trying to protect against your assault. Okay, that's where everything else is ending up with the rest of their moves. Able to keep the fungoid cave shaman up with them. Mangler's over there, they didn't move at all. Kind of realizing that squig herds can't take orders, so I'm just gonna have to make that nine inch charge, thus giving up the battle tactic. But if I make the nine, that's pretty good. You could still get it with uh, Mangler. He's you... five, right? That's the thing. Yeah, he'd have to. He'd have to. I hit... only have three in. Yeah, currently. He... So as long as he doesn't die on the, he'd have to hit pretty hard. He might be able to pull it off though. So I'm yeah. gonna rely on him mostly here. Do I have a four to victory available to him? Eighteen of my general. Yes, I do. Okay, I'm gonna roll. I'm gonna roll him first. I think I have no shooting because we're right to charging now. So we're gonna try to declare a charge with our Mangler Squig, and we're gonna see what he ends up getting. I need a seven because of Wild Form. I need a seven on the dice. I'm gonna get an eight on the dice, which is actually a 10 inch charge. So I'm gonna crash right there and we might think about doing an Unleash Hell. Only about four of the Reavers are in range for the Unleash Hell, which would be eight shots. Not feeling it? I just don't think eight damage when you're a three up save is probably gonna make too much of a difference. No, no rend on their attacks, eh? One rend, so, but back even to a still, four. Yeah. yeah, back to a four. They're hitting on threes because they're 
within nine, they get plus one, so it cancels out the gotcha. minus one. So it'd be threes and threes, eight shots, threes and threes. It's like five ish wounds, yeah. Yeah, and you save. and a half saves. Yeah. Although, does he bracket, I guess, would be the other question if he brackets in the. He might not off of off, off two or three damage. Yeah. But it's a way to get some damage on him for a command no, point. No, we'll save it. I'm gonna, okay. I need, I'm gonna need those command points. It's an aggressive turn one. We're already, I guess we're already kind of spicy turn one. But he does get to do his curse blast. So when he charges, they actually kind of bounce into the unit. They don't like headlong charge because they like pseudo fly. Mechanically can't use fly here, but uh, we crash into the unit. I roll a die for every model in the reaver unit that I charged up to a maximum of 10. For every four up, they take a mortal wound as they're knocked aside. Right, so here are the potential mortal wounds. We do about half, it's four of them out of the 10. Because they're near a boat, they get a ward save of five, five up. up. Yep. Five up, nice. And they get one. There you go. Three of them get curse splatted. One with each. Yep. All right. And then we get our monsters rampage, which I'm not going to bother doing the mangler squig one because that's the unit I actually want to kill. So we're just going to stomp on. What's their save? Uh, five. Five up, eh? I don't think Mystic or all of defense. They have he has pretty high rend. I'm gonna. The question is, will the rend do? I'm gonna just do a stomp. I'm not gonna overthink it. Hey, hey we stomp. D three additional mortal wounds. That one there, two of them, which you have a five aboard against. Ooh, I squish two of them with my feeties. Bam, bam, bam. And then, well, naturally we fight. I can't really pile in because I'm pinned up against that rock, but we're gonna try and smash some of the reavers. Would you like to all out defense? Because I'm gonna all out attack. <laughs> Um, pro I should probably declare a charge with those squig herd over there. Uh, need a hard nine. Nope, that's pfft, nope, that's a three. Now I'll go to fighting. So this is where I'm gonna I'll all out attack from the general who's on, within eighteen. It'll, oh, I have no command points left after that. I just burned through them all. <laughs> what happened? Should leave me with one command point. And you said you wanted a defense this? Yep. All right, go reavers. We're gonna start with the Mangler Squig's huge fang-filled gobs, because we're Jaws of Morks, so we get the extra attack on the charge. These are four attacks base up to five, hitting on twos because of all that attack. Uh, I missed one, but it helped me with that one there, which is nice. I believe these wound on threes. That's a pretty spicy roll. The rent two, but you have a six up save because of the defense. So every six you roll is money. Let's see what you get. No, no, no. Oh, no. This is D6 damage per fang filled gob, so we're feasting on the Marty today. Oh, that's 15 damage. 15 ward saves from the boat. We get our average of 10 in here. It looks like you got about five or yep. four. Gosh, it was only three. That's 12 dead. Thralls. I've been calling them Reavers all game. The Reavers are the shooty ones. Yep. Okay, so we killed some Thralls, and we have just a few more attacks. Apologies, everyone. A quick correction on that one. It is only rend one on the huge fang-filled gobs, but uh, Scott was so unlucky, he rolled only four as his high die. And the rest were twos and threes on the save, so nothing needs to change here. When I panned over here, this was a four under the rock there, if anyone's curious. I only showed the two pips, though. But uh, Scott was able to see it on his side. So we are going to go to the balls and chains, which are at the actual rend two attacks. Seven attacks with the balls and chains, hitting on twos because of all that attack. Uh, didn't really need the help there. And I believe... That is three wounds. These are six up saves because of all the defense. It helps on one of them. So we have how many left over there? Three. Two D3 damage. That's four damage. So I need to have a little bit more attacks after this too, okay. but it's just the goblins. So it's a little bit. Oh, oh only one damage. All so right. That means we have two, two left. left. <laughs> Can the goblins do it? A bashing sticks, four attacks. We got three hits because of all that attack. Uh, one wound and you have your four up save against it because of uh, defense. One damage which is a board. Oh, nice, all right, the boat! The boat protects. After everything is said and done, there are two remaining thralls who can pile in if they need to. I don't know if they need they to. They have though. two inch reach. Okay, easy enough. They're gonna strike at the manglas. They got five attacks between the two of them, because yep. the ch champion, sorry, got a hiccup there. Yep, looking for threes. Nice, only one Let's miss. Start. He's threes. a big target. Three wounds. Three rend wounds, one rend. The one rend will just counteract the magical shield I have, which means one is gonna, they have a four up save base. Normally one damage, but because I'm a big target with a lot of wounds, it actually increases their damage characteristic by one. They're pretty good monster hunters. 12 remaining wounds on him. And then uh, that's kind of it, right? Yeah, the, 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 the Reaver guy back there is a little too far away to pile in a fight for now. And um, come to Battle Shock, I assume you're going to Inspire. Yep, I Inspire, and then he brings back D3 plus 3. Bringing back four guys at least. It's five coming back, which means I don't get the objective. You're going to be bringing them back within three inches of the desecrated land here to hold this part of the battlefield against the Squig Assault. 
All right, so we crash into the thralls, but this character here brings some of them back. So that means my five model count is trumped by your at least six on there. So it means I don't get my tactic. However, I do control a majority of the objectives, which will give me three victory points at the end of this turn. And we're gonna go to turn one for order in the, uh, the deep kin here. Current update of command points, because our generals are alive as we go to the bottom half of the first turn. Go for the ceiling falling on us right away in case we forget two and a four. So nope, look for sixes there. And for my battle tactic, I'm going to do deny trespassers and kill the thing within 12 inches of the boat. Absolutely. The mangler is the target here uh, for more than one reason. <laughs> yeah. What's the plan for leadership? Oh, we're <laughs> leadership. Heroic actions. <laughs> we're going to do heroic leadership on the squig render again. All right. Boop. And run that squig. Squig. Boop. Yes. You could, because it's your hero phase, you could also... Oh, do an additional... Well, I, was, I forgot that that is true for the Realm of Beast one, but also because we're playing with uh, the narrative campaign, you could do the monster one too. That's you, true. You can make him a monster That's and do a true. rampage. You can roar That's at me. probably worth it. And yeah. then, yeah. And then you could technically do three heroic actions. Because we've got the, the bonus one. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. we both have access to the metamorphosis. Um, although there's not really, another, he doesn't have to heal. There's no spells you're going to be casting, so there's nothing else I could do anyway. Just metamorphosis? Yep. Then? Yeah, right, we have enough. a monster. Just pretend that's a mangler squig there. <laughs> It'll count as a monster, but however, I will let you know there is a heroic uh, or battle tactic for trolls to kill a monster. That's real. That's All okay. right. Fair, fair, fair. All right, so he is going to be a monster as well. Um, my action is going to be leadership, I guess, on the, the, the Squid King. He fails it. I'm going to go for a Mystic Shield with the Arcane Tome. Out of a six. If I'm in range to unbind it, which I think I might be, I'll attempt it or dispel it. Or unbind, I guess, in this case. You're in range. I am going to roll a seven. Oh, nice. No shield. Trying to go for Steed of Tides with the Eidolon. It's off on a five. Ten works. What do? Uh, it lets him deep strike, oh, essentially. Fair. Okay, teleport. reposition. Yep. Welcome. Set him up more than nine away from all units, and then his second spell will be Tsunami of Terror, because he can cast, he's a wizard one. Yep. And he is allowed to re-roll all of his casts and unbinds. Because he's a big a wizard. Seven. That's good enough for me. Yeah. It's 11 to cast, so what does this do? I get to roll a d3, and I get to assign a minus one to their saves for each one. All right. And they can all be on the same one. So two minus ones. Oh, on that guy there. Okay, so, so I can I can do it to two separate or one individual. But I don't. I'm not in range, and this is the only one I care about. So he's going to get minus two to his save. I'm just gonna get rid of that mystic shield, and then I'll let you put uh, one tsunami beside him. <laughs> all right, that's it for spells. We're gonna go right to movement. I will show you where this all ends up because it's very free flowing and very fast. So we retreated from the combat over there. And then we had the archers and... No, we didn't retreat. We can't. Nope. That's right, because you can shoot in the combat. Sigmar. Yep. That makes sense. And other games, too. Uh, that is the Reavers moving forward to gun it down, or bow it down. Yep. And then we had the two sharks move forward towards the squigs, the Achelian king, and the... Squeals. Squeals moved forward as well, leaving the back open, but you can quickly respond to anything that pops up back there. Yep. And uh, that is about it. So where do you want to start shooting, I suppose? I have no redeploys. So. We are going to start with the Eidolon is going to use his abyssal shooty power. I don't remember the name. But D3 shots. One, One shot, threes and threes. That is a hit. And a... No. 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 That was into the big guy. Pretty much all shots were into the big guy. Correct, so correct. Um... I'm, well, I'm going to all out defense. Sorry, I meant to say it earlier. Because I know everything else is going to go into him anyway. So, I'll, with the king, uh, the squid king, I will all out defense him. Which, after the negative two from the tsunami and then the plus one from Mystic Shield and plus one for defense, we're back to a four up save. Do the first half of shots. Hitting on. Hitting on twos. Because of the range. Normally threes, but plus one because within nine. Is this the first? Yeah, is this the first half of the first unit? Or is this the first unit? This is, it's all one unit. Of oh, it's force. 20. I keep thinking yeah, of the squads yeah. are 20. First half of the, so I was kind of right. First half yes. of first yes. unit, but yep. it's That's reinforced. Yep. Three to wound. And I have a four up. We don't care about any of the range. Four up save after everything's said and done. 16 on the first half. I have my 16 saves of four up. So far, that's five, 10, 11 damage on that first one. Not a great transition of rolls there. Uh, one move left and we got the second volley coming at him. Let's see what we get. This is it. This try to save all the damage. You could, you never know. Twos and threes. There's a lot of ones there. And threes to wound. 
All right, less this time. Can I do 10 four ups? No, not quite. Not close. Wow, that though. was real close. Spicy. They do have death throws before they go down. Uh, all of the Namardi nearby scream, watch out, as on a four up, these guys suffer D3 mode wounds because they're close by. They do watch out, they take no damage, and the big guy is removed, and that does complete the battle tactic as of now. And the rest of the shooting, these larger pieces in the sharks. What are we thinking? Uh, I would like to awaken you off of that objective there, so we'll start. Uh, both of them are going to go into this unit, so I'll roll them together. Roll them together, makes sense. Threes and threes. Couple misses. And threes to wound. All right, four. It'll go right through them. They have no ward, nor do they have any armor save. So that's going to be eight damage, because that's two per shot. It's actually D3 per shot, but the average should be about eight. Yep. Uh, look at that, it's eight. <laughs> Easy enough. That'll skewer four of them. I'll just take... One, two, three, four, I guess. There are two wounds each. And we're on to charging. Do they still have bonuses against wounded units? They do. Nice, they, feel, they smell the blood. The squig blood, the squig smells the squig blood. Hungry. And I see a seven. Yeah. Bring it on. Huzzah! Uh, any, are they monsters? They're not monsters, are they? No, all right. I guess we're gonna go right to fighting with a shark and uh, we're gonna see what the shark can do. Squig shark. Squigs uh, come in many different forms. This one is a shark. We're going to issue an all-out attack. I can't do anything defensively. Squig herds cannot issue or receive any command. Or I, probably receive, but they can't. No commands. And with the squig alopex bites. Yep. Getting plus one because they're a wounded unit. Threes and, sorry, twos and threes with the all-out attack. Do you, oh, do you get plus one to hit because of the wounded thing as well? No. Oh, okay. It's just a plus one to the attack characteristic. Oh, bite. one more attack. I understand. Yep. Gotcha. Yeah, one, four, and a one. One! All right, uh, probably enough rent to go right through. How much damage? Two. Oh, well, we are going to lose the squig. Brr. The dude's up top. Twos and threes again. Oh, that's a good start. So everything hits. And threes to wound. Oh, wait, one fails. That'll be enough to kill one, two, and wound a squig. Because uh, rent one on those, uh, those elven blades. Or, sorry. Gittish blade. We're gonna fight you right back, but we're the jaws of Mork, so we do, we only get the bonus attack if we are the ones who do the charging, because that's that's the fun part of the fight. They get a little disappointed when they don't get the charge, but we're gonna pile in all the same. That's how we pile in. All the squigs are able to attack. The handlers, I'll figure out afterwards. They probably have a little bit of reach, but for now it's five, ten, thirteen squiggies. All right, so thirty-nine attacks from thirteen squigs. Here's the first half. Getting on fours. Threes do miss. I can't order them or nothing like that, so they just gotta operate well on their own. But they're squigs, we all know they do. Threes to wound. So the first half is gonna give me three wounding hits. I have to do a little bit better than that on the following 19 attacks. Okay, that looks a lot spicier on the hit rolls at least. And three. So on top of three, we got okay, still kinda not connecting nicely, so we have another five. So eight in total at rent one. One of these to survive. I got some of the little handler attacks oh, okay. as well, but uh so minus one, so I have five up to eight. Okay. Okay, good good stuff. Three damage. Yeah. Only one of the prodders can attack. Uh, so it's two attacks. He's got, sorry, four remaining wounds. Fives to hit. And he wounds on a five. Okay, one more four up save from the pro. And no damage. All right. Sorry, then, I rolled that quick. That's okay. Uh, battle shock. Now, I did lose quite a bit of my squigs. Now, I, I have to either decide if I want them to run away and, like, mortal wound this thing to death. Or if I use my indomitable now. I'm probably going to try and mortal wound it to death because I lost quite a bit of squigs this turn. Lost seven, bravery three. I'm going to. How many, he only counts as two models, right? Yeah. Okay, so I'll probably still have the objective no matter what. I'm going to try and take him out. Because if I can take him out and I win priority, I can just keep the momentum going. And then everything can crash into your lines, and then we'll have a suspicious uh, squig game. Squigs. In the end, squigs will win either way. So it doesn't really matter, I suppose. So I'm going to roll their bravery. Uh, lost seven honored friends. Uh, so we roll a 12. That is going to be nine over three. And uh, that means we're going to uh, roll for nine of these squigs running away. So five, nine. Every two up, we'll do a mortal wound to this thing. And he's going to take, uh, yeah, eight, uh, eight mortal wounds and over get overrun by squigs. Wow. Didn't want to lose that many squigs, though, you know? So it's not overly worth, but it depends on the priority roll here. So a bunch of those squigs decide. It's hard to handle that many squigs, you know? We keep the handlers, though. And you have your own bringing back mechanic at the end of the Battleshock phase. D3 plus 3. It's 5 again. So the Reaver unit's already pretty full. So the Gamble and the Mangler Squig almost paid off. If I was a little bit better with the Ball and Chains, I could have taken them out. But this is a Gamble over here as well. Because if I don't win priority, then this was not worth anything, really. 
because uh, I've given up a, a lot of attacks to try and kill that thing, and hopefully these herders bring them back. Now, for scoring, you do get your battle tactic. Yep. But you only control one of the objectives. Yep. So that's worth three victory points. points, so we're tied at the end of the first battle round. Which is pretty damn good. Uh, we're going to go to the second battle round now. We got priority rolls, and we're going to see if the Bad Moon moves up. So this, I think it's before the priority rolls. It doesn't really matter. The Bad Moon's in the middle of the table. So that means the whole table gets the light of the Bad Moon, which can be spicy, but that's a little early because it could then bounce to this, like, inconsequential table corridor, you know what I mean? And then we have priority rolls. I win ties. I don't want to lose. Six, yes. That's big. That's big for the Gobbos. Because that means these guys can come back to life and I can keep pushing the uh, the onslaught. Hopefully, this could be bad. Could be rough for the, the other gits. And on to the next round. Current scoring and command points. Because Savage Reach nearby and I'm playing Destruction, I'll get that extra command point in my hero phase. Oh, uh, I need, yeah, it has less things to even bother with. Let's see if we get the mouthpiece of Mork popping off for that fourth command point. Oh, rules not flat. I know, I know, guys, I know. There we go, got it, all the same. Um, and we're at the four. And then I'm gonna we'll see if the ceiling falls, I suppose. Uh, I have no ceiling falling. Do you get ceiling falling? Uh, yes, you randomly, it has to be random. So I, I'll, how many do you got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight units on the table. And seven. Oh, thank you, that works perfectly. Uh, that was the, my wizard, I think. <laughs> no, <laughs> watch out for the rocks, dude. He just suffers D3 mortal wounds. Three? The rocks. I'm gonna probably have to attempt a recovery this turn then, I suppose. He he did gift me an extra command point for the mouthpiece of Mark, so there's some justification in that. I do have to roll for the handlers here to see if they uh, they kind of run around and try and like rally those uh, squigs that ran away to the battle shock phase. So the way this works is I roll a d6 for every handler in the unit. On a roll of a one, uh, they get caught by the squig they're trying to catch and get killed. On a two up, they 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 herd d3 squigs from the battlefield back into the unit. Uh, I guess I'll just roll this. None of them die. And then I'm going to get back three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten squigs. So one more of the ones that ran away. They are back to the parent unit there. And then before anyone discusses it, the rally command was the one that was errata. This is not a rally command. This is just units coming back, models coming back to units. The rally command was capped at 10 wounds. Uh, so I technically brought back 20 wounds, but this is not the rally command. Also at the beginning of the hero phase, I must feed something to the pot. So this poor squig is going to go down. <laughs> into the pot he goes. Important to remember that he dies because they're bravery three and I can't rally them. Okay, now onto the other things to do at the beginning of the hero phase. I am going to attempt a recovery on the fungoid cave shaman, uh, even though it's bravery bad. Probably good, better than four though. So we're gonna recover, we're back to full. All right, Rock, you're no, I, I know this cave. And our battle tactic in the second battle round will be follow the moon, which is control more objectives than Scott does at the end of this turn and have every one of my units affected by the light of the bad moon. But we know it is shining bright in the middle of the table. So we have that effect. And uh, we're gonna go on to spell casting where he can cast two spells because he's got a friendly cauldron nearby. And then you, obviously your heroic action as well. Yep. What are you thinking? We go look for a command point. Heroic leadership. Five, you got it. Uh, the Eidolon gets that. So you'll have a fourth one in your pocket just like myself for this turn. For spell casting, I'm just gonna go ahead and start with the Realm of Beast spell that we can all cast in addition, which will be the... I wild form. Oh, thank you, wild form. Plus two to run and charge rolls on a 10. I can cast two more spells after this. Okay, I've got three unbinds total, so I will well. try. Um, squig render. Looking for an 11. That is a four and a four, no. All right, so we're gonna target just this unit here so they can run and charge. I gotta keep him nearby here so when squigs die, I can like, get them out, kind of ping, ball, uh, ping pong them out there, but I also gotta get them a little closer to the enemy, so I'm probably not gonna worry about that at all. And, uh, cause this is kind of inconsistent anyways, the Loon Shrine. And uh, that'll go on them, and I gotta figure out what other two spells I wanna do, cause he can't do his own built-in one, and let me tell you, Mystic Shield is worthless on a five, six up save unit. Ah, uh, it gives him a save, I guess. Uh, none of the spells are gonna be overly relevant other than Itchy Nuisance and Mystic Shield, so I'll probably go for both of those. Start off with Mystic Shield. Uh, got that with an eight, might as well try and stop it. Yep. You do with a yep. nine. All right, so I don't have to worry about Mystic Shield. Then I'm going to go for Itchy Nuisance. Uh, got that with a seven. The last unbind. Ten. Okay, don't have to worry about the targets. They weren't great. It was either the Shark, the Alopex, or the Reavers, because he's kind of far back. That will conclude my hero phase. We are going to go right to movement, where 
Everything is going to advance and charge except for the trolls. Start with them, they move five plus 2d6, they'll go up to eight. That's where they're going to end up. And then we have a redeploy somewhere. Who are you thinking? I don't want my king to die off of that, so. King is going to go three. He's going to reposition. King's going to move back there and he'll order himself that. So you're going to have two command points plus the third extra one on the Eidolon there. I am going to, do you have, you don't have the alpha thing, right? So, okay, no, that's it for redeploys. So I'm just going to go Correct. ahead and move everything else. I will roll up these squigs here. They're going to go five inches plus, they get plus two to this as well, I guess. So they're going to go 12 inches. There we go. And there we've left our poor little shaman alone. Who's going to run now, I guess. Three, I guess I can just. I'll keep that near them. Okay, so we're gonna have the trolls end up there, the squigs end up here. That's where the shaman ends up. And then I gotta advance both of these squads. They're gonna go up and around that rock. We're gonna keep the squig. I wonder if the squig hopper should just jump back here and just put pressure on this back line as well with everything going on. I don't want to, because the king's back there. He can just deal with them, and then this is exposed, so we're just gonna keep them here, I think, sadly, but it gives them the option to jump around if needed. It's fun to see the run rolls. So those squares are gonna go five plus ten. They're gonna go fifteen. I'm gonna move. I'm gonna make room for this guy around the corner there. So they're gonna go wide around. And I'm just gonna roll him an extra four. Coming around to this side of the battlefield, we have the fifteen-inch move on the squigs. Absolutely massive. Then his eleven-inch move takes him there because he's moved seven base. Honestly, no shooting in this list. So oh wait, they have throw stone. That might be a thing. Two of them are arranged to throw rocks. So I'll throw them at the reavers. Just two more wounds on them. We got a five aboard though because we got a boat nearby. Boat, 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 boat! Eh, one, one wound. Take that, Reavers. Ah. And uh, we're gonna go right to charging. I don't even know where to begin. I'm gonna start over here, I guess. They go 10. All right, that's where they're gonna end their charge. Kind of engaging both, but fiending for the objective back. At least that's where they're being prodded. I want these trolls to declare a charge next and see what uh, uh, Destiny has in store for them. A seven. That's a charge. That's it for their charge. Uh, the, mostly the idea is to pile in and get some attacks going wherever I need them. Okay. And uh, would you like to unleash hell? I would love to. All right. Boom. This is where the unleash hell comes from. I did kill one. <laughs> so yes. it's a couple less shots. Uh, I'm going to just eat it because the guys in the back are going to be taking the majority of the wounds here. They ha currently have the light of the bad moon on them. Are they rend on these attacks? One. All right. Well, I can't do any orders anyways because uh, it is my charge phase. We used to hit with their bows because of proximity. Within nine. Well, that was a lot of twos. True. All oh, would be twos otherwise, though, because the standard shoot. That's right. Yeah. Unleash heck. The first half, too, for anyone curious. Three to wound. So far, seven. And the second volley. Threes. And threes. Okay, not bad. It'll be 12 in total. They're going to have a four up save because of the light of the bad moon, increasing it and reducing it. And then they have a five up ward save on top of it. Uh, okay, they take three damage. It doesn't even kill one, Scott! It's close. One wound left on the troll in the back. Uh, they do nothing else on the charge. Uh, and that command point was spent from the Eidolon, who had leadership on him. We're going to go ahead and try a charge with the dang old Trogoth, who is not a hero, but maybe he'll roll, ooh, three. But he might be within 18 of my, he's definitely within 18 yeah. of my general. So my general will forward to victory. A seven? So he'll end up in there. The problem is I won't have the rerolls through the other units back here, but hopefully they don't need them, you know? So let's go with the loon boss himself. The squig king declares a charge. He rolls a seven. Let's go right there. Nothing too fancy. He could go there, but he's going to block them mostly. These guys are going to go for the assassination on him. He's That guy's so important to kill. They have to roll on the charge, though. And we are going to charge a sevens across the board. Just everywhere's a seven. Well, I mean, it's the most likely roll, technically. Uh, that's how they're going to charge in with the with the eye on the prize there. And we are just fighting everywhere over here. This is just a lot of scrapping going on here. Uh, I don't have any monstrous rampages. He's still a monster, so he can. But I can't do any orders on these guys anyway, so he could stomp. stomp. Yeah. Might as well. Well, stomp. And, yep. D3 mortal wounds. At once. <laughs> Let's go ahead and say uh, happy jumpy guy back there is going to take that stomp. And uh, I believe we're on to fighting. I got to pick kind of carefully here. I think if I want to do the most damage, it would... Oh, I didn't even charge them yet. They still have the charge. They're going to get plus two to this charge roll. They're going to go 10 inches. I kind of want to go a split on the Alopex and on the uh, the Reavers. 
It's not going to be beautiful, but it'll be something. Because I'm not going to be able to fit them in heavily over here just because of the Trogoths coming in. I'm not uh, going to commit to going to base to base with those guys yet because I don't want to get within three of the Eidolon. I want to see how you remove casualties first, I suppose. And I realized how good the handlers are for keeping coherency on split attacks like this. Now, the real question is, where the heck do I fight first? That is a question for the ages here. Literally everything's tied up in combat. I'm afraid of getting hit back the hardest here. So I would like to do the most damage over here. But the problem is, these guys have a lot of wounds. They're four up save, right? Yep. Four up save, they can all load defense to go back to a four up save. But I got a lot, how many squigs here? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 squigs with four attacks each. So it's gonna be 56 attacks on that unit. I think this is my best bet. I'm only gonna kill two of them on average, but it's a, that's not a bad hit at all. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. I don't believe piling in is gonna uh, advance me too, too, too much more. Uh, I can't really, <sighs> it's like, I can't, I, I'm gonna pile in because it's important for the objective, I guess. So it doesn't change too much. I just get a few more models nearby and uh, we're gonna go ahead and do our 56 attacks, I guess. And we are gonna go ahead and do an all out defense on the squeal riders. They're the more, more sar. the more sar, they're the offensive ones. So here's the first half on fours, 28 attacks. We should have hopefully about 14 hits. There's uh, 14 hits, threes to wound. Okay, that's a little bit of, well, that's pretty close to average actually. So, so far we got five, eight. Second half. Okay, not bad. Threes to wound. So on top of the eight, we got, ooh, not a bad roll. That's gonna be 10, 15, 18 wounds. I did four up with the rend. They're four attacks each because they charged. That's why, that's why this is a scary turn because every single one of my squig units charged. Four ups. Not great. So maybe that's actually not as terrible. It's about the average-ish, yeah. Kills the one in some, or exactly two, or just, ooh, one actually, in... Actually, that was... Oh, uh, that's good. Nice. Yeah. So I killed one, and one has one wound remaining. Uh, I have the one handler attacking the shark, I guess. Couple attacks on fives. Uh, no, they miss. To no one's surprise. There we go. One wound left there. Sir, you get to pick where you fight next. I'm gonna... I don't even know. I'd assume it'd be the Reavers. Not the Reavers, the Thralls. <sighs> thralls, I think, over here, they can do some damage. The Thralls are up next. They're going to go ahead and pile in and figure out their attacks. I have the Loon Boss. Let me get to the other side here. The Loon Boss is going to all-load defense him because these five with their two inch reach are going to hack at him, doing two damage each because of his wound characteristic. And then this guy is getting attacked by six of them, including the champion. And then this one guy is just going to be attacking Squigs because he has no choice. I'm pretty sure my big guy is going to be okay, so we're going to go ahead and all out. He's going to issue all out defense to himself as he throws a spear up in the air and just like, I got this, boys. I'm going to do the lone thrall first onto the squig herd. It's two hits and wounding on threes. Uh, one damage. Finish off this one that gets that got stepped on earlier. And then uh, what do you want to do next? We'll do the your general next. All right. All right, let's see. Ten attacks. Threes. Okay. Not mm, great. That's not ideal. Okay. And threes, threes to wound them. Three at one rend. Three at rend of one, which means we have a four of save with missing our all the defense back to fours. Take <sighs> He's got six. two wounds left. I had to fail four to die. Two wounds left, then the 13 attacks and the dank hold trog off. All right, what do threes. we have here? Yeah. These thralls, man. And threes. Okay. He's got a three up save because of the light of the bad moon to a four up. So he's going to go ahead and he, he's got two wounds left also. <laughs> oh man. It's not like the math on either one of those. Uh, I did not like the, the math was, actually no, the math was good for me. I didn't like the outcome on either one of those. Yeah. I got, luckily I survived though. That's, I suppose that's all that really matters. I am going to fight next with this squig herd, I guess, before the shark gets to attack over the reavers. I suppose. You know what? I was, this guy can pile in and reach the dank hold Trogoth. I'm not going to bother fighting with him. I think I'm going to commit to this plan and try and take out the shark and alleviate that maneuverability you have over there and then just put some damage on them realistically, I guess. So uh, they're going to go ahead and pile in, but we want to stay away from him still. So we pile in, but I got to keep that one squig away because I can't fit him in there without angering the Eidolon. And he's kind of big and scary, and we don't like that. Uh, so we're going to have the five attack them. It's just a casual 20 attacks, because <laughs> they charged. And then we have the one squig piled in over here to get uh, eligible attacks. So six, 11, 13. Okay, that's just 52 attacks. 
These are the 20 attacks into the Reavers on fours. Ooh, they angry. Threes to wound. With a, well, that was a great roll, you five squigs. <laughs> five squigs, everyone. Uh, 10 wounds, everyone won. All right, and then they're, I assume, Sixes. all five of save base, yeah. yeah. Well, you save a Two. couple. That's a nine, eight. eight damage. No ward because of the boat nearby? Because you, yeah, your oh, squigs near is near the boat, close enough to the boat to turn off the ward. Squigs is interrupting things. Taking a hit on the Reavers there. Then we have our 52 attacks into the Alopex. There's 26 of the 52. Okay, we kind of biffed the first roll there. I think we only had like eight hits. And not one of those dice over <laughs> that many misses so far. And the, the we were uh, joking about just removing it. So we have six wounds on the first half. Can it happen again? That's a little bit closer to average. And threes. All right, so six plus that's 10, 14 at Ren 1. With a five up save, he has eight wounds starting. So let's see if he can make seven of them. Seven five, five ups. ups. Nope. Uh, that's probably not seven five ups. All right, so we get the Alopex. He is consumed by other squigs. Squigs love feeding on squigs. Oh, I only needed one more, two more saves. Two yep. more? Okay, yeah. That was way worse. Uh, yeah, so did I. That first row only had like eight hits on the 26 attacks. It was kind of nuts. So we're going to have him pile up and around, and we're going to get him within three of the loom boss and the troll there with the intent of using one of his mechanical, kind of like, he's got like a little like animal trap on his uh, spear there, so I'm going to try and uh, neck him. Uh, so we're going to put the two-inch reach attacks into the squigs, and then the three-inch attack where, oh, probably the big yep. guy. Yep. yep. Is it the end of the combat kind of thing? Yeah. Okay. And after he's done attacking, or after the whole combat phase? Uh, that's a good question. It doesn't oh. really make a difference either way. Oh, because he's mounted. It yeah, it's, 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 I can't do it if it's a mounted. Did you want to put the attacks into him then, or just try and take out the big guy? I'm going to take out the big guy. Take out the big guy, all right. There's the important attacks. This is like the little fishy follower friend. The yep. squid, well, the squiggly follower friend. He sends him out three inches to take a nip out of him. Threes and threes. Okay, we've got three hits. Two hits, sorry. And a, oh, one wound. One wound. Uh, one rend. One rend. We take the damage. Oh, so one close. wound. It's only a one wound attack hit. Yep. One wound left on the big guy, and then the scythe swiping at the squigs. Threes. <sighs> Man. These guys have to go back to goblin elf school. Uh, rend of one. I don't know why I'm rolling. <laughs> Two damage. Yep. One dead squig gets cut up. Come on, flip over, you metal dummy. Boom. Look at that. This is actually probably one of my favorite squigs. Look at that guy. He's got such a happy smile. Pile in. I'm going to have this guy use his two-inch reach to attack there. This guy is going to attack into the Reavers as well, and so is this troll. So all three of these trolls are going to attack the Reavers. Uh, these two trolls are going to attack the... Thralls. Thralls, thank you. These are the three attacking into the Reavers on threes. And threes. Oh, oh whiffed it! Yes! That's good for you. That's really That's big. Huge. Keeps you Keeps you in a good position, yeah. yeah. Then the two attacking the Thralls on threes and threes. Thralls take uh, minus two, so they probably have a six up save. Three each, so it'll be six damage in total from the Thralls. Kind of carving up the side they're fighting from. And that is it for my attacks. You can go with these guys next. Yep. Be a bunch of attacks here. We got a lot of the Morsar squeals attacking now. I remember these guys were complicated in second edition because like the profile was different on the tail and the mouth attack. And then it was also different from the, guy, the riders. I don't know if that's still true, but it might be. And then there's something about uh, if you were like the animal, the one that specialized in all the mounts, then you have bonuses with like certain attacks as well. I hated it, but I think it's easier now. It's a lot easier now. What how, what house are you playing anyways? Uh, it's Morphan. Morphan? Okay. What does yeah, that do? That, that gives him the bonus to the, uh, what's it called? Oh, I see. Yeah, it gets only D3 returned. Unless he actually kills something, but I understand. otherwise he just consistently does brings, this three yeah. plus D three. Understood. We're attacking with the eels first. Three to hit. That's a good hit. Three wound. Nice. Is there a rend on the eels? There is one rend on the eels. Okay. Rend, rend ever. So I don't have to worry about it. One damage each or two. D three. Roll it up. That's gonna be two, four, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen damage so far. Now the riders get to go. They only have one rend, one damage instead of the two rend, two damage now. But no rend, but yeah. Oh yeah, no yeah, rend. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, so you double the rend. All right. And threes and threes again. All right. Not bad. The mouse did well. Five wounds, eh? Yep. Six up save with no rend. I save none of them. Just one damage each. Yep. So that goes from thirteen to eighteen. That's it. Uh, yeah. All right. So we're gonna lose nine of our little guys. One, two, three. 
four. I'll get back to you guys in a second. So that's the pile of dead squigs. Uh, maybe to return, maybe not. And uh, we are going to then proceed to my next pick. I'd be kind of smart with my next picks because I need to put a lot of pressure over here still. This guy being alive is huge uh, for me. These guys kind of biffed their attacks over here. However, if this goes really well, I could then have him pile in this direction and clean, well, not clean up, but apply damage to them. But this guy's got to die. What's the range of his heal? Probably 18. six, 18. Oh, then, never mind. That's vast <laughs> in its range. So I think the best course of action here is to have the squigs go, because I don't think my loon boss can finish these guys off, but the squigs can, and then the loon boss can try and finish them off. And then he's free to either squish him or them. We've piled in. I'm going to have up to this guy attacking the... The Reaver? I actually have no idea what he's called. The, he's Soul Render, but we call him the Squig Render. The Squig Render. Right. We're going to have five attacking the Squig Render, and then that means one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen attacking the Reavers. All right, fours to hit with the first half. Look at all these misses. At least they're clustered. I can remove them easily. Threes to wound. All right, well, why don't we... You only have uh, six, six, six wounds in Let's go ahead and do this one. That's a nine on the first half. Uh, yeah. Nine here. So we need sixes. Uh, I got some, but they're dead. All right. Yeah. So they get a, a little overwhelmed by squigs, and then we're going to see what we can do to the squig reaper. Ravager. Squig herder. Uh, render. Render. All right, so we are going to attack him with 20 squig attacks because uh, we charged. Squigs love charging, guys, let me tell you. Right, these are threes to wound. He has a simple seven wounds that run one on him. It's been a long combat phase here, folks. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, these are four up save normal, so five up with the rend. Boom, and your own little feel no pain. Yep. So I need to save at least one of these. Okay. You can do it. I'm going to switch out some of those less <laughs> Get rid of the, the crap dice. Oh, nice. He Kay. takes three? Yep. He's got two wounds left? Yep. All right, we'll have to work on that. So we've piled our Reavers in. Uh, we've These two are going to attack the Squigs. That one's just there for coherency. These six. Five, six attacking the Trolls. And then these two are attacking the Dankul Trogoth to try and take him out again. Remember, he only has one wound left and massive hitting potential. Why I haven't gone with him yet, I was trying to go for this guy first because I wouldn't have been able to reach them and hit him. But uh, if he still goes down, I, I still want to kill him, but I have the Loon King. Or not the Loon King, sorry, the Squig King who could do it. All right, so what are we starting with? Just the one to do the inconsequential one first, the yep. two into the Squigs? Yep. We're going to get these Reavers warmed up. Yeah, warming them up. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Let's go threes with that. and threes. Okay. See, that's why I don't want to That's what you it. need. That's yeah, what you yeah. need, right? Okay. Okay, so they're going to get warmed up. We're going to take those dice away. So it's trolls. Right into the Trogoths, gotcha. Okay. Threes to hit him. Ooh, these guys are spicy. That's oh, yeah. these yeah, guys are warmed up. They're ready to go. And whew, there we six go. wounds. Oh, rend. We have our moonlit hide for a three up save, and we have our single ward. Can you kill him? No. <sighs> Cranks the ward. And then my anxiety attack. Here we go. Oh, it's a good start. Uh oh, spaghettios. <sighs> Ooh, spicy for dramatic effect. First one. He's good because he has the moonlit hide. He's good. I'm sorry, Scott. I'm uh, sorry. You're getting denied every. It's like, but it's not like whiffing or anything. It's just I, you're. you're it's, I know. Very one wound, man. It's the worst. It's the worst possible <laughs> griefing dice can give to you. I hate it. Every little circumstance has gone slightly in my favor here. We'll talk about it like later on, but there's a lot to cover, especially the shift of power. If the priority had gone to Scott and his forces because of his command trait and the spell on this guy is so much to discuss. That battle round two thing was a big roll. I am going to attack with the Squig King, I guess. Just go hoppity, 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 hop. Hello, we're gonna attack this guy. Yep. He is the Squig Whisperer. So that means he's gonna let his uh, mount attack first. He has a, a fifth attack because of the charge. Uh, and because he is the Squig Whisperer, uh, his Squig hits on threes and wounds on twos. Uh, hits on threes. Oh, it didn't really matter at all there. Wounds on twos! Also didn't matter there. Nope. Uh, because he also decided to loon cap his squig's teeth, these are in two. And sixes. That is 3d3 damage. All right, the squig, uh... <laughs> all right, so I need a lot of wards here. <sighs> the squig is hungry. The, the, the squig king does nothing. The squig does it all. Oh, all right. Super dead. He gets uh, consumed. Fueled by Gurish Rage. Oh, yes. 
Boom, 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 boom. Ooh, he's back. That many wounds. So what happens there with Fueled by Gurish Rage is I would have done all of my Goblin's attacks as well. The Squid King's attacks would have been would have then been resolved. And then we make the pool of allocation. And then you roll your saves until you go to die. Then you negate the one that kills you and you roll it. Well, you negate it and roll the D6. On a three up, you negate the you heal the wounds and negate the rest of the wounds in the pool, which means his spear attacks would have also been negated because they're all put in at the same time. And then he just that's it. Combat's done. He's too pissed to die. However, we still have the big guy here. Uh, I don't think you have any more attacks. I don't think so either. So he is just going to pile in around this reaver. He's like, what kind of git is you? But he's just going to face the enemy he wants to crush. So he'll end up about here, and then he's going to his head. And uh, I forgot about his squiggly beast rule. He's got like little bugs on him that attack things. However, the only unit that was really relevant to were the Reavers and they all got killed. So it doesn't really matter. At the start of the combat phase, he has like a mortal wound to every unit within three. Got an it. enemy unit within three, but neither one of them were within three. So he's got four attacks with his massive boulder. Sorry, massive boulder club. I'm going to put three into that character and then just one into the Reavers just to try and ping some damage off on him. And hopefully these don't whiff. These are threes to wound, threes to hit, twos to wound. Oh, we are gonna just put him into the ground. Ren two, and you box car in. No. Okay, well he's gonna take six plus two d three damage, so he's gonna take us uh, nine damage, which he's got ward saves against. Oh, too mad to die. <laughs> Boom, down he goes. All right, he'll go down, and then I have the one attack to resolve into the reavers, which is a miss. All right, I had no wiggle room there to all out attack him, so that's why I just figured I'd not risk it too, too, too much. And uh, that, everyone, I think, resolves the combat phase. <laughs> I think we did it. I think we just played a very long combat phase on my turn, too. And uh, we did a lot of damage to the Deepkin. However, we have to go to Battleshock, where I got to do mine first. I don't know. It's tough, because I don't know if it's worth doing a Battleshock over here or just letting them run and then trying to do like five mortal wounds. I could get lucky and kill two of them, which would be kind of big. You're probably thinking, Luca, you have to take the battle shock check no matter what. I have the indomitable trade here, which I don't really want to lose models. Well, I mean, I'm kind of hurt over here. I'm back to them. I don't really know. My brain ain't working so well here. I lost one hero there because he's in the pot. So bravery three. Hey, we're good. Ha <laughs> ha, roll the two. He's gone. I lost two little honored friends over here. So roll a six. That's three more going to run. And uh, I guess we're just going to attack these guys over here. Of those three, who wants to run? Probably one, two, three. Sure, those ones. Those ones boogie. I have one die anyway. One. <laughs> you have to excuse me. One, two, three. Ha <laughs> ha. I'll do three mortal wounds to the Reavers. Okay. And that's about it. Pull them from that side over there. That's what we got left. Pull one and two from over here. There's one you pulled from earlier. And then the third one is the tricky one. Too close. Oh. Okay. So we're going to so, lose the yeah. champion and it'll but keep them coherent. Keep Perfect. Easy peasy. Just losing the triangles on the sides would kind of break the coherency. And then I got to figure out the last one. My best bet's indomitable just so they're not free to charge on your turn. And I'll use my triumph here to hold the squigs for, to hold here. And again, it's you can do it on squigs. It's not an order. It's just a game effect that you can do once a game for the triumph. These guys over here do a little bit too much damage. I respect them too much to uh, just to kind of... If I got lucky and killed a couple, though the three remaining could still absolutely truck units, so not too interested in that happening. And uh, that is going to be it. These guys have to test, but... I'm going to use my command point to... Inspire bargain. them. Yep. And there's, I can't stop that, so... That is... The end of it. So I get three victory points because I control the majority of the objectives, and every unit I have is under the effect of the Light of the Bad Moon. And uh, I hold the majority of the objectives, so that'll be an additional three victory points to give me my five. That's how math works. Yep. Current score and command points. I was at one at the last of the end round there because I couldn't really do anything with it. All right, let's see if the rocks fall. You roll a three. No rocks, no rocks. And then uh, eventually I have to heal the trolls, but you get to dictate the beginning of the hero phase things first. They heal at the beginning of every player hero phase. If you do the mega mob, they heal every hero phase and every time they fight. All right, we do eye for an eye for battle tactic and try to see what we can do. <laughs> that should be very easy to do because you do have this easy pick in Zenith right here. Yep. Luckily, or like, you know, any of the, yeah. the troll, that yeah. guy. He is fueled by Gurish Rage, but I think that still counts as him dying. But uh, he'll, be a, he'll come back to life maybe. And otherwise, uh, what would you like to do for your heroic action? 
Um, we will. I only have one command point, but you do get to do two with a champion, or you could. Do I, my what is? So I got to be a GC, and I don't. My GC is he dead. All right, dead. fair. Well, this guy could become a monster, like he always. Like he oh, always. That's true. So I get that's a free one anyway. Correct. Yeah. So you can do that. He will be a monster. That'll give him um, some stompy action, and then we can do. Uh, I mean, we can find a sour the Eidolon just for funsies. That's true. Get him in combat. Plus one wound, plus one save. I'm going to attempt a recovery on the Squid King. Nope. They ain't no one recovering <laughs> that. And the trolls have regeneration, so this unit here is going to heal to full. And then the big guy is going to roll a one. He's at two wounds. All right. He's better than one, I guess. Spells! Oh, I'm going to see if he's in range of the... Oh, fair. Tsunami. All right. Yeah. Tsunami, Tsunami of Terror. Seven. And you can reroll if you need it. Yep. Eight. Eight. I may as well try and stop it. Yep. Nine. That's a six. D three targets. Three. Or right. the same target three times. I could. I can split it up or do individual. One big wave of nastiness. But it just chooses trolls three times uh, because the Trogoth has magical resistance, which every time he's affected by a spell, or each time he's affected by a spell, roll a four up to ignore it. So like, there's. A, I don't know if it like interacts. Every time he's affected by it or not, but it's risky enough and complicated enough where it's going to put the effect on the uh, Rock Cut Tragos. Minus three to their save, um, which they have a three up currently under the Light of the Bad Moon. Casting a bolt. I can't stop it. So you have a bolt. So that's it for spells and abilities. So we're on to movement. Is anything retreating? Uh, no. Okay, so just the Eidolon, or the Eidolon, and the King. King. Well, with everything staying engaged where it is, this is where the King ends up to, you know, go for the objective to take it back. And then over here, he shifts just over. And we're going to go right to shooting. Eidolon first, D3 shots. He's got the, the weird magic. He's like a magical blast, essentially, from his rod. Yep. And three shots. We are going to put it into the big guy there. Oh, big guy there. What's the rend of it? Two. Two, eh? I'll try and I'll low defense him because he's going to get shot by the other guys too, I guess. Ooh, that's three hits. What are we winning on? Oof, only one at rent two. Rent two. He's got a three up. Uh, effectively a two up, but rent two back to a four up. Two. How much damage? The, the, the wound got knocked over, but he's got two wounds. He does go down, which means the Reavers are free to fire at those they're engaged with. Also does give you eye for an eye. And then the Reavers. Everything into the trolls. 16 shots into the trolls. Twos and threes. Not a bad start. Threes to wound. Oh, good follow up. Yep. These are minus four attacks because of the tsunami, so right to ward, even though they're under the light of the bad moon. So we ward uh, four of them. So that saves one troll's life. So one's dead and one's got a wound left. Who's you? We're going to put a wound, I think, on you. What's their ward for? Five up. Five. That'll bring us right to charging, but we have the king trying to charge. Doesn't need much. Kind of needs to stay where he is and yes. just hit them a little bit because he wants to stay within six of this to gain some points for the good guys. All right, that's where he's going to end up keeping them. Hold the within 12 for high tide later, which is his command trait, I think. His once a game ability. Once yeah. a game ability, yeah. All right, so let's see what this guy Idle. wants to get. He's good enough. Ten inches. <laughs> We're fighting in cramped corridors, though, so it's, a, it's like the, the, this is like the height of the, the ceiling, essentially. So it's hard to fly up above units. It's kind of awkward. Then do you, is this, oh yeah, we get the high tide. You also got your stomps and everything because he's a monster. It's true. I don't know what order they happen in, but. Um, so he charges. He's got three things to resolve, actually. Yes. So he's going to see how many units he can put into high tide. Three. Three, which is only these two, which is fine. And then for anyone curious, High Tide is the third battle round effect of, I don't know what the actual rule is called, uh, the wave thing. Like the, it's deep, the Tide, yes. The Tide, the Deep King get a different army-wide rule every battle round. Does this one give you the rule in addition to the current one? I don't know if they really yeah. matter too much. Tides of Death. Tides of Death, that's very dramatic. Yes. Okay, so the third one is units have fight first. So these two units are gonna have the fight first rule. And then the other thing is the impact hits and then the monster's rampage because he did um, metamorphosis as yep. an action. All right, so his horn on a two up. That's a horn. Does D3. That kills a squ nope. nope. <laughs> I guess I'll do a damage to that squig over there in the corner. Okay. Stomp and stomp. Uh, you step on a squig and does it pop a squig? Nope, what well, does? Well, it does. <laughs> this squig over here gets popped. Yeah. If I can reach him, thank you. One dead squig for the pile. And then I think you, what you have, these guys have to fight first, and then you pick something to fight first with. So yep. up to you, really. Yep. 
The king will strike first. He gets two extra attacks. Two extra attacks. On himself or the whole thing? Just himself. Just him? Gotcha. Yeah, so that, that was the problem, is that I really wanted to not have to get the objective, because I brought him in here, he would have gotten four extra oh, attacks. Right. For each, two for each unit. What do we attack? Just everything into these squigs, I assume? Yep. Yeah, yep. fair. So it'll be twos and twos, because he is a Kellyan, uh, plus one to hit for a Kellyan unit, that he is one, so twos. And twos. Twos. That is all but one. So that is three rend, three damage to each of those. Okay, so we are looking at 12 damage so far. Actual mount. He's got a sword, too. Oh, that's right, he's, he's got, got the sword. Yeah, yeah, I see it right there. <laughs> he's got a lot of it. This guy is like the, probably one of the more blender characters in the game. He's got quite a bit. Twos. Ooh, one miss, okay. Threes. And rend of enough to probably do damage to me. No rend, one damage. Oh. Oh, it's the, the sword, but now he's got the squig mirror, we'll have something. Uh, so we take our two red 14. <laughs> Why did they even give him that weapon? It does nothing. It does well, nothing. I, but that's the, that's I guess he has the weapon. He's extra, he's got an offhand, he's like, what else am I going to do with that? I guess throw a sword at him. Here's my uh, offhand yeah. attack. He's got a shield too. And the actual squig mirror. Yeah, so we have fangs and talons and then lashing tails. All right, so threes and... Oh, three hit. Threes... Two of them. This Rend is Rend of, 1, D3 damage. So 2, D3 damage. It's going to be an additional ooh, six. And the Lashing Tails. Lashing tails. Threes and threes again. Two. Rend of anything? No Rend, two damage. Six is. Nope, two more damage. So a total of 24 damage on those squigs. That kills 12 models. I'm going to kill one, two, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. It's going to break coherency. I think, because I don't have the indomitable thing anymore, I'm just going to lose all my herders. So it's going to be 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and then the rest of that run away, you're just going <laughs> to swarm him as they run away, I guess. I don't think I've ever seen a character do that much damage before. That's very impressive. I like that. I'm jealous. I, that's why I wish I had him get into two units. Two more. Give him another attack. two yeah. more D3, uh, or sorry, three rend, three damage would have been another potential six damage. <laughs> Excuse me, I throw up a little bit yeah. in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I'm jealousy. I love having the big combat characters. Everyone knows it. All right, these guys over here, uh, yep. they also have fight first, so we're going to go yep. ahead and resolve them. All right, and then we're going to see what they're able to do. We're going to attack with the riders first, I suppose. Yep. They're all plus one hit because Mr. King nearby. Yep. It's only for the riders, not the mounts. Twos. And they all hit threes. Ooh. Oh, okay, not that many. I looked no. there initially. Yeah. Seven wounds at no rend. The armor, the, uh, the scaly flesh of the, I guess, squig stops the one. That's six damage so far. Threes and threes, one rend, d3 damage. Ooh, not as good. And then the rest. Ooh. Not great. Four at one rend. Ah, uh, no save. So d3. Okay, six more damage. Total of 12, it's gonna take out six of the models. I'm gonna, again, lose the handlers because I don't expect any bravery to stick around. That's four dead. Uh, and then we'll go five, six dead, leaving three remaining. Those were both resolved that fight first, and now Scott gets to do a pick, yep. which will be, I don't know who's better. I'll let you figure that out, I guess. Yeah. So we have the big guy, the Eidolon going next. I was thinking we'd do the Reavers, oh, just Reavers. because I think they're going to die before they have a... Oh, that makes sense. Actually, yeah, yeah, we talked about that. The Reavers first, they try and take out the trolls before they get uh, walloped. Yeah. Just pile them in to get them all in range to attack. And uh, then there's threes and threes. Threes and threes. Okay, not bad, but I have like no... I guess I have yeah, six of saves. Because yeah. they're not rend on their melee attacks. Correct. So five... Three ups, or six ups. We stop one, and then the ward. Stops... Like one's got one wound left. That one dies, I mean. And then this troll will have a single wound left. And then my pick. All of this is already fought, so I might as well go with the squiggly beasts here and have them pile into the Eidolon. Just go there. And also, for anyone curious, we did not want to engage the Loon King. Not the Loon King, that's a completely different character. This is the Squig King. Uh, we have only five in range to attack with a pile in. Fours to hit him. Uh, not overly good. In fact, it's only four hits. It, three wounds. But you have finest hour, so base save. Three up. I do maybe a damage. And a ward. Five up. One. Glorious damage. <laughs> and after I resolve my attacks, I have mushrooms in the war sometimes. After I resolve my attacks, he fights back. Because that's the last uh, 
deep clean thing to play with. Everything's gonna be attacking the squig, so what are we starting with? Trident, threes and threes, two runs, two damage. One miss. Should be two, is it four swoon normally or three swoon normally? Oh, it doesn't matter, they both wound. You get finest tower. Four damage so far from the trident. The scepter, threes and threes with the finest tower. Oh, it mattered. Random, yep. at least one. one. Yep. So I roll the damage up, I got no save. Oh, uh, these are single damage. Oh. The last element's probably the weird cloak and all the fishies and it everything. Is. Yep. Two <laughs> d six attacks. Oh, this is so, the one that had the three inch reach because we just yeah. we were discussing maybe engaging the Squig King with the three inch reach on the cloak, but it's so random that it might not have been worth doing. Fours and threes with the. Okay. Uh, Normally fours and fours. So yeah. four hits, threes to wound. Uh, ooh, four wounds. I'll torch you a little bit on. Yeah, the, yeah. Uh, <laughs> this is this would have been his saves. He would have lived. So yeah. He made the right. He yeah. made the right call. He would have had one wound. All right. Uh, I'll just. I count that as my squig saves. I guess it's the same thing. I mean, it's the same saves either way, except they have a six up. So they make one of those, and but the six previous damage I took, uh, I'll take nine. Uh, so it's going to be two, four, six, eight, and then one more damage. So we'll put the wound on this guy here because I don't want to figure it too much. Okay, well, that means uh, you're done attacking. I get my trolls, baby. Uh, what the heck do I want to do with them? We'll have you go this way, and you're going to go closer to that. Oh, it's going to break coherency, though, if he dies. Is he going to die? Is there any way he could take damage here? Who? This guy here. I don't think so. Oh, you have an arcane bolt he could shoot out. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you could do that. Uh... Ooh, you know what? I'm. You could Since you could save that, I guess, I'll just pile in and not be uh, too extra with it. Boom. Uh, did you want to do it at the start of the fight phase to them to do extra damage to them, I guess? Or do you want to wait till the Battleshock phase? Because it doesn't really matter to me. Oh, I mean, I could kill the last one is what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I do have the yeah. ward save, but it's D3. Yeah, more. it's probably. Close. You might yeah. as well do it. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Three. Five of ward. Uh, we take one, enough to kill the troll. Yep. I'll just pile like that to keep it simple. We're going to put all the attacks in the reavers. Threes to hit him. And threes to wound him. I'm gonna assume you don't really have much of a save on that. Nope. Nine damage. Just absolutely cave in the reavers. Just sweep right through them. Just, this is a brutal game. We're just killing the crap out of each other. And then I get to attack with the rest of my stuff, mostly just being the squigs there and the squigs here. Start with these three squigs. I'm gonna pile in towards this objective, I guess, but they're gonna run away. It doesn't matter. I'm just gonna stay there. Put it this way. If the roll matters on Battleshock, they'll be over here instead, but I'm just gonna be lazy and not move the models. Fours to hit. Bloop. And they are gonna hit three times. And one. That rend one. Five. It, nope. Take that filthy eel. Got one. Oh, it's gonna crush my coherency. Well, you can take the musician yeah. there. Yeah. Because yeah, you got the other one yeah. over there. Yeah. These two at the back there are just chilling. They can't get in range to attack. However, we do have eight attacking uh, for a total of 24 attacks. And I assume you're gonna all out defense him. Yep. Do 12 twice. Fours to hit. We got four hits on the first one. Let's do the second amount of hits. This plus four. Okay, that could have been better, boys. Four, four, and then threes to wound, and you're gonna go back to your four up save. Oh, that was, that was a good wound roll, I'll take it back. And seven, four ups. This guy's like a lot more offense than defense. He takes, does he have a ward? He does not. Four damage, yep. he's got nine-ish wounds. Uh, he has seven. So well, he's a soft boy. He's a very soft boy. Oh boy, three wounds left, that does not bode well for him. Nope. Hmm. Oh, well, well, does that not bring us to the end of the combat phase, which I don't think anything too crazy happens. I always go right to the battle shock. You have to do yours first, but you don't have any. I don't any? have any to do. Yeah. I lost one eel, and it's not enough to fail. Let me tell you, I got some battle shocks I got to do. Yeah. All right, so these over here, uh, they lost six of their honored friends, their bravery three. So I'm going to add, oh, so we roll a 10. It means they all run away. I am not going to be a degenerate. I'm going to put their mortar wounds on these guys over here. Uh, I, I know it's not the rule for the squigs, but the rule, the way it's written, is super toxic. So just do the mortar wounds to like the nearest target. Or randomize it, or do something other than the way it's written. Every two up is a mortar wound to them. Because the way it's written, I can just pick him and just do mortar wounds to him if I want to. Nobody likes their characters being sniped. So three mortar wounds. I think they have four oh, wounds. Yep. I thought you had an extra one in there. Nine. Just the three. So got him down to one, and these guys are dead. I think... That's their pilot, but they took like 12 or something. Five, six, seven, yeah. eight, nine, 10, 13 or something. I think they're gone no matter what. Yeah, they're gone. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So, but because he's the nearest, I don't feel bad targeting him. Uh, but I think I technically have to do them one at a time because once he's dead, they start going over this direction. All right, so they're all running. Uh, every two up is a mortal wound. So it's 10 mortal wounds. So nine mortal wounds, I'll do three to him and six to them. Yeah. 
brutal. They're all gone though. They're all dead. But so is all this stuff over here. There's still a couple left, because it's he's dead. One. And then he takes one of them takes four. Yep. That's five. So then one has one has one left. I need yep. this guy alive. Um. You could probably afford to. What's the banner? No, you? I, it gives a plus one to. Actually, let me. You don't need measure. that banner at all, really. Yeah, so because the the I think the can have already done their battle shock check. They don't have to worry about those extra damage they took there. They've already passed this turn. But having two eel riders left is not ideal. This is all dead. As well, just like all these metal squigs. It's like all the squigs in one turn gone dead. But so is all the, the deepkin. This unit here lost. Four little homies, and uh, I gotta do bravery first. Four plus five is nine, so that means that six are gonna run. And four, five, six, that's that's five. Two ups. They find the Eidolon and do five mortal wounds to him. Let's have a ward though, which is I not, <laughs> not helping. So he's taken six, how many wounds does he have? 12. He's half dead. Yeah. Okay, well I gotta actually move my squigs too. Well, I can't really afford to lose, I guess I have to lose these squigs. Makes some sense. Three. Four, five, six. Just have the cluster of the standing ones left there. Those are all the ones that boogie woogied. And these guys do have to take a battle shock check, but I did save one command point to inspire them with my general, so don't have to check that. Because I'd rather keep my trolls around, you know what I mean? Now, uh, after two whole battle rounds, both armies are essentially tabled. I am left with this, the trolls, my shaman, who's fueled by Gurish Rage, and the squig hoppers back there. You have two. Uh, more sand, more sar, squeals, yep. and the Eidolon. Yep. That is it. <laughs> I mean, it could rally in that those eels could do True. some damage you next could, round. You absolutely could rally. Uh, you are going to get two points for your battle tactic because you uh, eye for an eye, and you'll gain two victory points as well. So four points on this turn. So I'm up by one at the end of this battle round. And then let's see what happens to the bad moon. Does it vacate? It stays in the middle. And we got a priority roll, which... Kind of dictates quite a bit here, but we'll see. I win ties. I got a two. You got a three. Interesting. Well, you might as well be crazy not to take it, I guess. Correct. Yeah. Take a shot of the scoreboard here as we go into the top of turn three. It's now high tide, so all deep can have fights first. Uh, currently, I'm up by one victory point and only one command point for the Deepkin because the, the Achelian King went down to the squigs overrunning them, and I have three command points. So we're for a battle tactic, we're gonna do Assassins of High Tide. I've gotta to try to kill two units while in High Tide. Okay, well you got two units of your own, so it's doable. Hopefully. <laughs> and heroic action, we're gonna do, he's gonna do Metamorphosis yes. to become a monster, and then he's gonna to try to get a command point. On a two plus. On a two up. Get it, that's a five. Oh, I saw that I see the one too, yeah. So you have an extra <laughs> command point on him, yep. which is pretty good. I can't Oop. rally my, <laughs> ah. I can't rally my trolls. Oh, we know they're engaged yep. with them anyways. I can't really rally this guy over here. Well, rally, I can't rally the squigs. Ooh, it's my hero phase. I think my, they bang together the gongs and everything to get more squigs. I'm trying to rally some of the squeals. I'm probably gonna try a recovery on my squig king, I guess, because bravery six. So it's only D3 wounds. I'm probably better off just like find a star in here. All right. Oh. One. Oh, one comes back with four wounds. Yep. Uh, be your base command point for that rally, uh, less leaving you with one on the Eidolon. Yep. I'm gonna rally the second musician because the other musician's hurt right now with one wound. Uh, the Squid King might be going down here. I'm not too sure what the best bet is. If I make him a monster, you can't step on me, but you can just kill me with shooting and stuff. If I recover him, it's on a six, so it's not likely to work. And if I give him finest hour, he'll just get stepped on because you're a monster. So I think I have to recover. So I'm gonna attempt a recovery. He fails it on an eight. So I, it does, that was the best bet. So the other ones weren't actual options. This is the only one that mattered. Spell time on the floating nerd. Yep. So we are going to try to cast um, the Tsunami of Terror. Yes. Seven is what I need. It's an eight. I'm not gonna re-roll it if I've got it. I'm gonna try and stop that on a nine. Ah, not that you got it. So that's D3 wounds back as well because you cast a spell. Yep, so we'll do his wounds. He'll heal. Three. Three! Oof. This one priority roll has turned the game on top of itself. This is actually gonna be a night. I think you D3. might get the ring here. Minus three to save. <sighs> might as well put that on the trolls. That's where I was going. Yeah, that's the best target for them. And then you get one more spell, and I have no one bind. Yep. Um, Willpower could have been a good option too, but I wanted the heal. We're gonna try an arcane bolt here. I have no. We got it. Yep. All right. So that's another D three heal for you. 
It's only once. Oh, I see, I see, okay. So, yes, it is only once and it triggers at the end of the hero phase. It's if, if you can't do 500 spells, he heals once at the end of the phase. Not bad, they've still got the three, which is good. Uh, okay, is that it for the hero phase? So I got really um, nothing myself. The only thing to move for these eels, yeah, because he's tied up in combat, so that's where they move. I don't think I want to redeploy. Uh, I got the command points. This guy could get into a tighter position. No, I'm gonna keep him where he is. He's, I like him where he is. Keep him where he is, because I kind of need him near both. Uh, no, I will redeploy him. He's gonna go six inches on that move. I'll put him right there, a little bit closer to the trolls. And then that's it for my redeploy. I got two command points left. Shooting with the Eidolon. Yep, I'm gonna shoot into these squigs. Just to get them out of the way. Three shots. shots. He's been consistent. That is two hits. And probably two wounds. Two wounds. Rend of at least one. Four in total. I wonder if he can kill all the squigs. Well, we're gonna lose these two. Pop, pop. And then we're probably gonna have to... Well, probably lose enough to keep coherency. Okay. Don't really want to lose the handlers if I can avoid it. Let's lose the handlers. Let's put them back. I don't think it's going to matter too much. There we go. That'll be it. Uh, just the charging on the eels over here. Yep. Actually, do I get... <laughs> they can't fail this charge. Let's see how far they get to go, because they get plus one for the music man. So charging them in there, engaging the shaman, but keeping them there mostly. Uh, they don't do impact hits, right? They're going to use their once a game. The zappies? Yes. Yeah. All right. How does this work? Uh, uh, through one dice for each eel squeal and a four up does one mortal s6 does d3 gotcha and then one's two. Ooh, nice, nice. You, good rolls good rolls that's two mortal wounds plus d3 five mortal wounds is that a once per game on them yep okay. and then i ward one of them that means the troll goes down uh i don't know what troll to pull doesn't really matter who's that guy Monsters Rampage, because he did Metamorphosis. Stop Squigs. Ooh, D3 motor wounds to Squigs. It's going to kill two and a half, one and a half. The Handler and wound this Squig, I guess. Not bad. And then now we do, uh, you get to fight first with either one of them, so it doesn't really matter the yep. order. Who's it going to be? Uh, we're over here. We'll do the Eidolon. All right, the Eidolon. He still has a bolt active, so he can do yep. it at the start of the Battle Shock phase if he wants to, just yep. punk that guy. Let's let me commit to both of them, and then we'll figure out the attack. We're going to do the eels, because this is too complicated over here. So we'll, we'll, the pilot we don't have to worry about yet, because they're both attacking at, uh, right away. The eel should wipe out these trolls. Shouldn't be too bad at all. I'd have to spike some pretty nuts ward saves. So we're attacking with, with the riders first. Riders. No plus one to hit. Threes and threes again. And these are two damage because you charged. Yep. So that's six so far. Don't get a save because of minus three. And there, so the rend five essentially yep. on these attacks, if anyone's curious. And then the actual mounts. Three. Three more. But these are the D3, D3 damage. Three. Yep. Four, five, eight, 11. And I'd have to crank some wild ward saves here to live, but I could. So I negate three of them, which means I die exactly. That's one out of two parts for your battle tactic. Try and keep my general light with all of defense, because we're gonna all out attack and put all attack, with that one command point from leadership into yep. the general, who has two wounds left. Psy Trident, twos to hit. See, that's, oh, wish that would give me a plus two to hit. To wound, missed that. Oh no! That is Deep Sea Scepter. It's twos like, to hit. Okay, so those hit. Fours to wound, Hi one at one rend. We save it because of defense. Oh. You can still kill him with the bolt, but I get to fight first. It's yeah. a scary thing, yeah. Now the eight attacks. Fish. Come on, fish. I like to imagine they're also little squigs with their little fins. They got squigs jumping out of there. Threes to hit because of plus one? Yep. And then fours, fours. to. Ay, ay, ay. I can't. Oh my gosh. I make the save. The turn was going so perfectly. Everything was lining up until that. Yep. Ah. <sighs> Okay, well, I guess I'll fight back yep. with it then. We'll pile in the squigs first to try and take them out. There's five there for 15 attacks, plus the little handler. I'll do the handler first. You got a hit, and uh, no, no wound. So then fours to hit here. It's a lot of sixes, but they don't really account for much. And threes. Oh, nice. Six saves. Six wounds. Minus one. Four ups. Oh, there you go. One damage. Which I have a ward for. Yep. Five up ward. One oh. damage. Eight remaining wounds, and then I get to go with Buddy Boy there. Got four attacks with the gob. This is the uh, the, the squig whisper, so two's to hit. Didn't matter. I think. Let me double check, because it might be fours and threes, which means it's threes and twos. 
Makes sense, it's like the other squeak. So it's four state, three two normally, but plus one to both. Uh, now also Ren 2, because they are loon plated. So these are Ren 2. Ren of two. Knives. Three D3 damage. Okay, not bad, only five. And then these are wards. You take two more. They have said he's got the cut up. I assume that was the pole arm. He's actually got the stab, which is the pole arm. So it's four attacks, not five. But he didn't charge. He misses every single one of them. He tried though. You have six wounds left. Uh, we go to the battle shock phase, which you're gonna shoot a bolt out at yep. me. So and I need a th three up. Three up. Oh, he yes. got him. <laughs> that is it. Does, now my question is for your battle oh, tactics. Does it say attacks? attacks? Has to be attacks for it, okay. Yep. So he just whiffed on the attacks. Yep. Not much you can do about that. Nope. So it does deny the battle tactic. You will be getting two points for the two held objectives. However, uh, the Squig King does go down. Uh, not before doing some damage though, so that's not bad. I lost three dudes, their bravery three. So I'm gonna roll a nine. Six are gonna run away. The whole unit runs. Five of them are gonna try and do mortal wounds to this guy. Uh, two ups. Oh, only two mortal wounds. And you have the ward save. Uh, well, nothing. Zilch. Man, this is a game of up upsets. He, like, a four or less, I would have had some squigs left. That hurt or get a few guys back. Try and do some damage, but... Oh, I get to fight with this guy. Sorry, guys. Yep. Oop. He'll pile in and try and cut at you. Got three attacks with the moon sickle. Uh, got a great weapon skill. He hits on threes, but he's got a low strength. Only wounds on fours. So one wound at run one. Five. Five up. Nope. That's two damage. He's got two attacks. Forced to hit with his vicious teeth. Forced to wound. One wound, no rend. All right, and that's going to be no damage. Excellent. Okay, that is the end of the turn. Yep. Uh, you don't have to do battle shocks. You're okay. Yep. Uh, so that means you just get two victory points. And we go to my turn. Okay, so this is currently where we stand. Neither one of us can command points because both of our generals are dead. The battle tactics is going to be eye for an eye. I need to do seven damage to these guys. Right? Yeah. The train's not going to pop off until the end of my turn. So I got to do my whole turn without it. Uh, it's gonna be hard. I still have that objective, so that's not bad. Yeah. I don't think I can get this one from you, because I wouldn't mind the three points, but I can, like... Hmm. I am going to do three heroic actions on this guy, because it's my turn. Uh, and he's a champion. So he's gonna do Finest Hour. He's gonna become a monster. And he's gonna strike at the opening, which is the season of Beast one. So he gets to fight right now, but he gets he can't fight until later, until well with the strike last effect. So I might as well resolve that. He's gonna attack with his Moon Sickle. Moon Sickle hits on threes. Not a bad start. He's wound on threes because of Finest Hour. Ah, oh, with that one. And then uh, he hits with that, and then doesn't wound there either. Okay, so he doesn't get any damage in. That's okay. He's got spells still, which is kind of where we're at right now. I am going to start with his own built-in spell and hopefully get these off. You're going to try a leadership on your yep. guy. Two up. You do. And I have to suffer a mortal one to keep this uh, endless spell going. So I'll go down to four. And I am going to start by casting a arcane bolt, I guess. And I'm going to eat uh, a death cap mushroom as well, which gives me one more spell cast this turn. So I got a seven. Okay. Do you stop it? No. I'm going to re-roll. You can re-roll those. That's fair. Yep. He's a good wizard. A four. Nope. So we have three. We have an arcane bolt stored up. Yep. And then I'm going to use this built-in spell, which is Spore Cloud, I believe. Bore Maz. It's uh, just, he puffs out a smoke and makes it into a jaw. Seven to cast. Got it with a seven. Can you reroll all of them, I see? Yep. Five. Uh. D6 mortal wounds. Four. We kill one and leave one on three. We attempt to nick it, nick it, because we uh, ate the death cap mushroom. I need an eight to cast this. Ah, oh, it's a three. Didn't really matter what I did there. Okay, that's fine. No matter what spell I picked. So, it's going to be a little suspect, but we're going to hope that Fueled by Gurish Rage keeps us going. Or we crank a beautiful Arcane Bolt here. We're going to go to the movement phase. We're going to Arcane Bolt that guy. I need a five up to kill him. Oh, two wounds left. All right, so my movement phase, these guys are going to jump back here. And then they're going to reappear over yonder. Yeah, or there, essentially using the tunnels so that if I get priority for the next round, I can just jump on that objective and snag it. But the other part of my plan also requires the Loon Shrine to pop off. So, little suspect. I don't believe I have any shooting. We're right to fighting and you fight first. Yep. Didn't forget the mouthpiece of Mork on a four up. And that's why you're forgetting. Well, bring it on. You get to fight. Yeah, piling in anywhere in, in particular. Just or right at him. Yeah, just, fair. It doesn't really matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter too much. All right, good luck. I have no armor save, no ward save. I, I'm relying on a single three up to keep fighting. All right, um, all out attacking just to make sure I get the job done. Twos. Yep. 
And anyone's curious, I didn't, I couldn't itchy nuisance him Three. because he has fights first, and I have fights last because I struck at the opening. Is that Joe? Oh, jeez, how much damage? I have no save. So this would have is the rider. So these are already oh, nothing. Yeah, I negate none of them. I only have a six up on him. Okay. So those were one damage piece because he didn't charge. Okay. And then the riders. So it's three damage total. He's got one wound left. Oh, Ooh, one hit. Ooh. Oh, I got attacked. Oh, they all hit. That's right. Of course. Three wounds. Okay, that'll that'll take him yeah. out. So now these on are single, oh, yeah. he's, he's, he's dead. On a single, three up. Ooh, oh, he does. He's back to life with two wounds. And he has an opportunity. Now he'll just fight back. Yep. He's going to all out attack himself and hopefully get you with the sickle. I did. You have two wounds left because I got the one damage mortal bolt. So I need one of these sickles to get through. I hit on those and I wound on that with a round of one. No, oh, two damage. So that does take him out with the sickle. Because the, uh, the unit had three wounds and the full wound guy. I hit with four mortal wounds bringing the one guy down to three, and then we arcane bolted, but we didn't drop it. And so the sickle finishes him off. And that is the end of my turn, and I get my battle tactic complete, as well as holding these two objectives for a total of four victory points on that turn. And then we come down to a priority roll. This is also very important. You win ties. Oh, two, dang it. Six. I did forget to see if I get a unit. I do get a unit. So it'd be, I got 10 squig herds somewhere around here, but you get priority and we're gonna look at what this looks like. Couple things there, these trolls, half the unit of trolls come up, holy within 12 there at the end of my turn. I do lose priority still, but they can just move on to this objective to take it back from me. And then uh, there was, I think that was kind of it, right? Yeah, yeah. Then, oh, and then I have to see where the bad moon goes. Sorry, that was the next thing. It moves to this table quarter. So there's no more bad moon over here, which is fine, I suppose. And then that's kind of, it. So your turn will be kind of quick on your turn four, I guess, because yep. this is going to be a desecrate move here. Yeah, and then kind of it. Yeah, I, I would cast spells to try to heal him back, and then I will try to recover my guy. I guess yeah. is the best bet. So I guess we can do. I'll just do my recovery, get out of the way. I fail, and then you would. You could try and punk him, I guess, if you can do two different single. You can just shoot him with the shoot attacks. That's too. the plan. Yeah, yeah, I could tsunami him. I mean, that would be. Probably, it would still be worth it trying to get he has that too. a six up save, you don't even need to, I guess, yeah. Okay, him dying doesn't really matter too much. He's got a, a, a rule where he can only be, he can't, he's not on the table, he's not visible with, outside of 12, yeah. essentially, yeah. yeah. So I could shoot him, but I would not be able to do the battle attack. Correct. Okay, um, so I will do, I would do Desecrate, uh, and then I, from a Heroic, I would do, I mean, a command point doesn't really matter. Attempt a recovery, see if we can get the Eidolon up there. 10, he's probably 11 He is or a 10. Yeah, there are so. 10 even. So D3 wounds. Well, welcome back up to so, eight. He's got four yeah. missing. Yep. Cast, you can do Mystic Shield or something. We're gonna cast his Cloying Sea Mist. It's a healing spell. <laughs> that works too, actually. It fails, it. but I will reroll it. Rerolling new dice. Uh, eight, yep. I guess they'll try and stop it. Nope. So he I heals D3. Nothing. For two and for casting a spell, he gets one. So he's one. He's got eleven. 11. Nice. Okay, that's fair. He and Mystic it. Shield just for funsies. You can re-roll if you need to. I don't well, yeah, they're they're cocked, cocked anyway. all the same. Yeah, yeah. There that's go. good. Okay. He has it. All right, perfect. So he'll just move over there, yep. and then that's kind of it. Yep. The problem is the units I have over in the quarter, and then these guys rushing to there. So yeah. that'll be your turn. That's uh, one, two, three of the objectives under your control for three points, and battle tactic for five, because this is in yeah. my territory for Desecrate. And we go to my turn four, which I'm gonna try to recover. He's gonna take a mortal wound and try and recover. He's just gonna slowly die. Uh, I have no choice but to take the wound. <laughs> Everything, I gotta cut a piece of myself off and put it in the cauldron. I don't care about these guys too much. Uh, they're just gonna run onto that and they automatically make it in a roll four, especially. This is trolls. And then they're gonna run onto that objective. Doesn't really, I guess the thing, like the run will kind of matter. They're gonna go 2d6, seven plus, I think seven for 14. Cause they got it. Yeah. If I can get near this, I can stop a grand strategy. Yeah, well, this was gobble land all along. Not a whole lot of conflict at the end here, but it kind of matters cause the game was so tight. Oh, uh, this last dummy here. What the heck does he, he can't kill the big guy, so he's just gonna run, I guess? Run out of here and hopefully not die? He'll have to dispel his own spell. That's where he's gonna go with the 11. I'm not calling a battle, I'll call one of my random spider battle tactics. Yeah. I can't really do a battle tactic this turn. Uh, so I'm gonna save one for turn five and hopefully he doesn't die to this endless spell. That'll pretty much be the end of my turn and I am gonna see if I have a unit show up on a four up. I have squigs. This is where the squares are going to pop out around the Loon Shrine at the end of my turn four. However, I don't get a battle tactic. 
Uh, so we are going to. These are, they're all like three inches away from the, they're like keeping it so anything that shows up outside of nine of them will be outside of 12 of that. And then that's kind of it. So I get my three objectives for three points. Yep. Which at the end of battle round four gives me a one point lead. But if I win priority, I have access to these guys running and getting another unit if I want to risk it. Getting near that for a, uh, to deny a grand strategy. And then I do have access to a battle tactic over here if that dummy doesn't die. Yeah. But that means we have a priority roll. Can I win the four to five priority? A one, I, I don't. Oh my god. <laughs> you still get it. You've got the tie. So these were the points we got on the relative turns. Oh. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. I am up by one point because I got a 3D or two, and we match out on all the other dice there. Uh, the command points or whatever. I don't know if they matter too, too, too much. Yeah. But you'll have one, I'll have two, I guess. Plan here is to teleport, get near this guy, and punk him and kill him. And then try and make it by doing a charge, so I block the squig herd, so or yeah. squig hopper, so they can't get to your uh, your ship so easily. Yeah. Because um, no one can fly. If everyone could fly, it'd be a little bit easier too. Right. Because you could jump over, or I could jump over. But I don't think there's too many battle tactics available to either one of us now. No, I just got to try to prevent you, and then keep this mm -hmm. from happening. And then the problem would be the the three points I'd score on my turn from the the objectives to your one. Would have to be rectified. Yeah, so if I were to get this and you'd have kill to it. Kill that, then yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, what's we'll your. Try. Exactly. You can always try. That's yep. the thing. Yeah. So I don't have a battle tactic. It's a throwaway. I'm going to try to get a command point because I'm going to try to get a re roll on a charge if you, I need it. So I've got, got a command point. I think, I guess I'm going to try a recovery. Dang. <laughs> the, the goblins, though, yeah. so that great bravery. Uh, that's kind of it. I think, I'm gonna check the cauldron. I think it's only my hero face that eats me. We're gonna try to teleport. Teleport! Steed of Tides. That is a seven. seven. Yep. I will try to stop it, I guess, yep. if I'm within 30. And this is the one, there we go, 10. Yeah. That's so it, I, think, I guess. Yeah. I think I might be able to charge, but even still, that's gonna be a crazy charge. How far is he? All right, so. Okay. We're just gonna do a mystic shield just to. Boop, or you, yeah. Boom, got it. Can't stop anything else. Yep. And you heal the full. Yep. And he's able to move. So you gotta, did you want to do an arcane bolt on him just in case? Cause you're within 12. You could just kill him with an arcane bolt. Oh. Or shooting. I guess you have the shooting still too. Yeah. It's a, so if anyone's curious, it's another inch charge cause he's within a foot. Oh, well, actually he's outside of, he's like literally like 11 and like three quarters. It's, yep. it's still 12 inch charge. Yeah, but I could still shoot him. Um, yeah, I guess the bolt makes more sense. Yeah, there. cause it's the same roll either way. I can't yeah. stop it. I can only stop the teleport, which is big. Yeah, that, right, that was harder. huge. Yeah. Cause I could have a nine inch charge and then here. Cause I think at this point now you're gonna be able to get here and I can't do anything there. Yeah, so really, is, I think that's the end as it is anyway. Cause I could, even sure. if I did the bolt that he's dead. He dies, he dies the bolt right now. Yeah, so then that prevents your battle tactic but I won't be able to keep my grand strat and you'll keep yours. So you want to try the charge instead? Cause that's more likely to get you in a better spot? Um. That's true. If I get the arcane bolt, then I can use it after the charge. In the very unlikely event, I roll box cars. You have the reroll. Yep. Uh, oh, it's eleven. Oh. Come on. <laughs> we'll use the command point. Yeah. So he's again. He's eleven and three quarters away. So we need the twelve to make it. No. All right. That was two good charge rolls. If I had made that uh, teleport, the teleport, I would have made, you would have made it on both. Actually, them, exactly. It would even have been better. The eleven would have gone there, and you would have exactly stopped them yep. because again, no fly. They can't get yep. to the grand strategy. Yep. But I probably would have had the three points. I think you would yeah. have still had it. It would have been like a one or two point victory versus now you're going to shut off the grand strat and. Do you want to arcane bolt him just for the sake of killing him? Sure. Yeah. All right. Oh, he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> all that work, all that work, and all that strategizing, and he just gets killed by a magic missile. And then the, at the on my turn five, I just I, they would run towards that. I would end my turn. I would get the three points for my grand strategy, deny you yours, and gain get the three. Full, yes. Get the full three points here. But I don't get a. There's no battle tactic I can do. Yeah. So the final score. So with uh, your turn five, you get the one point. No battle tactics. I get six points because the three points and the grand strategy at the end of the game. So I have 10, 16, 21 points to 9, 10, 15. Exactly a six point lead because of the six points at the end there. That's how close the game was. So it came down to that. I can't. <laughs> Gloomspike Gits have successfully taken the territory of the Ironhorn Mountains for the Destruction Alliance. And don't forget everyone, if you want to come in and take part of this campaign, The Lost City, all you have to do is go to miniwargaming.com challenge for all the details. 
then control of the Iron Horn Mountains is established for destruction as they reinforce it. All right, well, post game, that was nuts. Yeah, I thought it was gonna go horribly bad for the Deepkin. I did too, yeah. that, that, that turn two, uh, I mean, turn the tide. I mean, if I had gotten that and getting in there, the King and the Eels, the Squeals could have done a ton of damage through there, but that survived well enough to like keep it that close of a game up until the very end. It goes to show you like, all you need with them is that unit of Eels, the King and, oh yeah, the Eidolon, or the Eidolon yeah. in this case. Uh, it was just, they had enough hitting power. Like my, we both kind of had glass cannon lists, yeah. uh, very low saves. Uh, very high damage output, especially when the squigs even die, they do further more consistent damage and everything like that. And when I, when I mentioned um, uh, targeting the nearest thing with the squigs, I actually don't know if that's been eroded or not. I haven't even bothered to look. I completely slipped my mind, so I apologize if I did anything that has been eroded, but I didn't really take, I didn't take anything too, too spicy with the list. Again, we both brought like off, uh, like what, like lists that were more thematic than not because like I had, I didn't want to take the overly, I wanted like a little bit of cave trolls in the list, but I didn't want to bring the Dranko, Danko Trog boss to make them better. So I brought the Trog off instead. I didn't want to bring the Boing Rock Bounders because like they're super, super, super good. I wanted just only squig herds. It's a farm. There's no professional soldiers here. It's just things cultivating squigs. And they had mangler squigs because they had some big squigs. And then yours is the same idea. It's like the things you converted, the things that you were having, you had yeah. fun converting, right? So like right. A, you had a little bit of everything. Like the turtle always makes the list really good. It could be, it's like, ah, I don't need the turtle. I want to do other things. Right. I mean, the Eidolon and the king are like the centerpiece models of this list. But exactly. It's a ton of fun. So yeah. yeah just and the turtle's up. not done yet. <laughs> yeah. The turtle's coming at some point, but not done yet. Exactly. So this game came down to every little move there at the end. I, I it, mostly this thing heading off and bringing back two units is the only reason I want. Well, I mean, there's a lot of other factors, yeah. but I got lucky with this bringing back the two units to take these objectives back. Um, and that's honestly kind of it because it was like two turns of uh, scoring three points because of them. Yeah, it was yeah big priority. Like turn two for me was big. You gave me the third one, got you right back in the game though. Yeah, and no, I couldn't right. take it back. No, that was <laughs> yeah lucky there. I had a couple things going for me there, and I had some. Bad dice, having losing the king and not having him spike those extra buffs on the rest of the squeals is tough. The, the, you, you actually, the squig herd is is not a bad unit from the book. The boing rat bounders are typically much, 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 much better. But weirdly enough, worked very effectively against your list because the reavers aren't really good at fighting the squig herds. And then the king will go in and kill them, but then he just got killed by all the mortal wounds after they yeah. all ran away afterwards. So I know he, he's something you need to protect. Um, and he just can't take the mortals. He's... Well, typically he'd go and mulch up whatever he's fighting, and then they either inspire and run away, or you commit to the fight when it's high tide. You don't expect to run away during the dying to the battle shock phase. Right. The squig herd are weird in that way, yeah. yeah. And um, they were they were they were damn effective in this game, and I liked how they played. And you know what? The destruction holds the day. The Iron Horn Mountains are now kind of revealed an open weakness to the actual fortress nearby. So they're going to probably consider reinforcing it. Now, mechanically on the map, that doesn't mean anything. But I'm going to play a little bit more martial focused armies when they have a control token on them. Because now the, like, the focus is on that token, yeah. right? Like now it's like, oh, that's a weak area. We got to like reinforce that. Now that doesn't mean I ain't going to play with the, 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 the squid king. The squid king will probably come back. I had a lot of fun with him and I liked his build quite a bit. So if I have to defend this area again, or if one of the content producers has to defend this area again, and I catch wind of it, I'll try and let them know like the squid king is here. This is his home. These are his mountains. This, he, he, he almost lost his life defending this area. Yeah. <laughs> what did you, uh, what did you think of the, the whole process of picking uh, an area on the like where you yeah, want to fight? Really cool, having the whole map there and like seeing everything that's there and kind of strategizing where it would make sense thematically to come through. Exactly, um, it was really cool. And because of the one, I think it was a Stormcast victory because you picked a point from where the Stormcast had attacked. I believe I can't remember what the game was, so I apologize. Anyone watching will know where that game was from. The but Razor you, Wing Pass, I think. The Razor Wing Pass. You were able to yeah. attack off of that into yeah. the mountains because Order actually has control over that pass to a degree. It was a Fire Slayer. I think it was the Patrol of Fire oh, Slayers yeah. that would just lock that area down, and they kind of held tight. And then you were able to rally there and attack into the mountains from that point as well, yeah. while the Fire Slayers held the destruction forces at bay. So that's kind of the idea of the campaign. Once little openings pop up, that's where other attacks can happen and spread out from there. That's about it for this game, folks. It was just tight right down to the narrow. 
super glass cannon armies just slamming into each other. I got that lucky priority on turn two. Not that I got a double turn, but I kept the priority going to turn two, and I took that gamble of rushing everything at Scott's army and then just tying everything up, and the attacks went well. But you held on the one flank and then hit me right back. Yeah. And then took that momentum and took it right to turn five. Yeah, <laughs> much closer than it looked. <laughs> and I, yeah, I, I, go. I appreciate it because we get a damn good battle report out of it too. It's some yeah. good content. People are going to watch it all the way to the end because it's a nail biter. So anyone who stuck it out to the end, let us know how much you like the content. Uh, you know, give, give us some feedback. If I forgot anything with the squigs, let me know. I don't really play them a lot. That's kind of the curse of the campaign where I have to bounce around armies, but then you get a lot of variety in the whole campaign as well. So maybe a missed rule here and there outweighs the variety that the campaign has to offer. Or maybe I did it perfectly. Who knows? Maybe I was the god of the squigs today and I didn't forget a rule, but I'm almost certain I did, especially when you got thousands of people scrutinizing the game. You're definitely going to find every little detail that you might have missed out on. Anyways, thanks for the game, dude. Thanks for being a great host. Well, yeah. host. I'm the host. Thanks for being a great guest. Thanks and uh, just rolling with the punches because that was a little rough looking for the first little bit there. But that just goes to show, always play until the end because yep. you never know what can happen. That's, that's Sigmar in a nutshell. If... Again, people hate the double turn thing, but they rarely ever give the game a chance to go to turn five. It's like, oh, I got double turn and I give up. I don't want to play anymore. That's not how the game yeah. is designed to play. You're supposed to go to the end because that's where the enticing part of the game is near the end where it's like a chess end game. I have two pieces left to beat your one piece. Who's going to figure it out, right? Is it going to be a draw or is it going to be a win? That's the idea there. Anyways, folks, thanks again for watching. Thanks again to Scott for coming out. From Rochester, I'm running out of air. I keep talking. I'm not taking a breath. And we'll see y'all next time for some more Age of Sigmar Lost City. Happy Wargaming, everyone.